Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Blue Thunder Pod WWE Edition. I'm your host, Billy Sullivan. With me, as always, my mom's favorite podcast host and looking very oozy today, Dave Alinovich. Do you think that they said uh, oozy and um, what's the other thing they say a lot? Uh, they what ish? No, no. Oos. They call oos, everybody oos. Oos. Everything's oos. I have a question about oos later. Yeah. Uh, do you think that they said that to the point where it just in, it was embedded in everybody's ears all the time, and then everybody because like a lot of guys, a lot of guys on Raw they, were saying "oose" and stuff, yeah, and yes. like not of the Samoan descent. And I'm like, it, man, how how much are they saying "oose" backstage? They say it nonstop. Because, well, my question, I, I, mean, I guess it's not a, it's not a big like uh, I'm not trying to do a big reveal or something. <laughs> my question yeah, about I think you are he, uh, Jay Uso was t- doing a, a promo later in the show in the raw in the raw we're going to talk about today. Yeah, he was talking to the crowd and he was. Saying oos to them, yeah. like in the singular. Like I tell you what, oos, but talking to twenty thousand people. Yeah. So like, I, it's a catch-all, and I think they say it nonstop. So I think other people are doing it now just because they hear it. Because I have a feeling that Jay Uso talks quite a bit. Yeah, even when he's not on camera. It's like a Samoan <laughs> um. Like, yeah, but I they're that it's just them though because it's just well, the, apparently it's, it's the whole it's goddamn just, locker room. Well, I mean, but they, they it wasn't like a Samoan cultural thing. It was an Uso cultural yeah. thing that became a WWE cultural thing yeah. because they say it so goddamn much. It's it's there. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I just noticed. I'm like, oh, it's bleeding into other promos. It's every, yeah, it's it, it's impossible. It's like when I talked about my wife saying phrases that I use after being around me for you know so long for so mm-hmm. many years. It just you can't fight that. You're gonna start talking like the people you're around yeah. that much. It's, so I think everybody's just like it's Usmosis. <laughs> it's, it's, ah, <laughs> ah, SmackDown was on a. a it was uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It was at the PPG Paints Arena. We should mention at the top of the show though, Dave, that we are uh, after we do our reviews for SmackDown and Raw this week. We are Dave and I are going to do a mock draft. Yes, we, we are have the upcoming uh, Raw SmackDown roster draft uh this week and today was actually the nfl draft so in uh keeping with the times we're going to do a mock draft um i will take the role of one dave the other uh smackdown raw and we will draft from their pool of available talent that's right we will flip a coin to see uh who is the aldis to um my peers I should just be all this because I want to do an accent, obviously. Oh, then yeah, I'll be. I, <laughs> I'm bald, so uh, I, uh, uh, it's an it's an audio but, podcast. No, no, I'm, I'm bald though in actuality, so yeah. I, I have two. I, I have the British accent desire. You can't be both GMs, uh, though. I'm just gonna do it, you guys. I'm just gonna do a draft. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll drop that separately though for the, yeah. <laughs> for just the freaks out there. Yeah. Oh, that'd be fun to do the <laughs> like, every available North American wrestler yeah. in a draft. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, it's gonna be now, well, now I have a bunch of stupid questions. But my brain, I was like, so is this, like Shibata, and because they're contracted in North America, but they're not North American. Yeah. Does that? My God. I think the rule would be if they're on North American TV in any capacity, that makes them eligible for the draft. Okay. Uh, free, free, uh, free TV uh, slash cable TV. Cable, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. not pay-per-views. Uh, so we're gonna get to the draft details later. Um, so we'll we'll get to SmackDown in a second as well. I know I just kind of injected that in there. Felt like the comedy timing was correct, but uh, not comedically. I do want to talk about Cameron Grimes yeah. uh, up top because they did him dirty. They did. I, I did not care for it. He did an interview where he basically said, uh, I have the entire quote here. It's very long. I don't want to read it. But in so many words, he was told that he had a job for life. And then several days later, he lost his job. Yeah, it was very Vincey. It was a Vincey feeling yeah. thing. I wouldn't even want to talk about this like openly, except that he talked about it. Yes, like immediately and was, was very open about it. So, yeah, uh, it was, so it was just uncomfortable. Like because the guy had money all over him. He said he was constantly pitching ideas to the back, and they're like, "Oh, just wait until the draft." And then the draft happened last year. Yeah, and then he came up, and it's like, "Oh, we're just waiting for something for you." And the more you hear these interviews. Like when guys get released, I, I used to think, oh, they're just not doing nothing with them. But then the more interviews I hear, these guys are pitching constantly. Yeah. And that's a you would think that's a good thing, but yeah. I, I don't you think... want creative minds or people that are right. enthusiastic. Like but I just they can't got imagine... lots of TV to fill. Like, I don't I... You're not wrong. But like in what world is Cameron Grimes expendable over and then you could think of three guys off the top of your head that are getting weekly television time. And also like do I like to to Raw last week? Do do we need three replays of Rhea Ripley's 
show opening promo or can we get four more people on the show? Yeah. They have all the money in the world. Yeah. It's not really hurting their bottom line. I know they're publicly traded and they have to do stuff to like make the needle move on that. And right. you know, firing people always makes the needle move. But like, come on, these guys like Cameron Grimes obviously has uh, like a future. He's got potential. He is he had a future in their own good. company. Yeah, they they did a pretty good job with him early on, at least. Yeah. Uh, it's a bummer, man. I'm like, yeah, it stinks. It's, I, it's a bummer. Never, you never like cuts. I, yeah, I'm sure he'll land on his feet. He's a talented dude. And now they're, I mean, I know as much as I joke about TNA not being a real viable third, but they do, they're a TV company and they, yeah. they it's a solid place for somebody to land. So if it's got to be there, even that'd be good things. And like, they could use a guy like him for sure. Anybody could. Yes. Um, also too, if you look at like Naomi went to TNA and now she's back in yeah. the Fed. So yeah, I think it's a wildly viable option. It doesn't have as much exposure, but they're, they got a pretty stacked roster in TNA. Yeah. I mean, everybody has a stacked roster these days. Yeah. But, but uh, that's, that's the, the point. way of like the world. But like, yeah. There are no bad companies they, anymore. The, the TNA just put on a uh, the pay-per-view two ago. I didn't watch the last one, but the, the one that Osprey was on or whatever yeah. was an incredible card, like top to bottom. Yeah. And some of it was like borrowed talent and stuff, but a lot of it was in... In house, they got. I mean, Dolph, Dolph's there now. Yeah, <laughs> rocking it out. So Nick Nemeth, <laughs> yeah, Nick Nicholas Nemeth. But yeah, I just wanted to. I don't know. It, that that one bothered me. Yeah, so well, I, I needed to address positive it. feelings for uh, towards Vic Grimes. Ho- yeah. Hopefully, he lands on his. What's his uh, What's his real name? Do we uh, Vic Grimes? Nick, is it, no, uh, well Cameron Grimes. Cam- oh, Cameron Grimes said Vic Grimes. Vic Grimes yeah. is the guy that New Jack tried to kill. Uh, <laughs> and then Frank Grimes <laughs> is the antagonist in the best Simpsons episode yes, ever made. Yes, he is. Cameron Grimes, what's his real name? I know he's like the Carolina Madman. Trevor Trevor Lee C- Cattle. Yeah, Trevor Lee, yeah, that's yeah. it. I was I Trevor s- Lee from... Uh, Dude, I, s- I saw him at Bourbon Street. Oh, nice. Yeah, like, I, yeah I, a bunch. I only I, uh, I go back to the Evolve, the, comp- the, uh, the indie that WWE bought and turned into a like a... Uh, one of their developmental areas. I saw him doing some stuff there that I thought was great. And then yeah. his NXT stuff was great. And, yeah. But he'll land on his feet. Yeah. Um, SmackDown <laughs> was um, airing, as I mentioned, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the PPG Paints Arena. That's they, a lot of alliteration. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> they were a little, a lot of numbers here. So they said it was sold out. I checked the capacity. It's 19,758. Later in the show, Triple H says we're at 15,000 strong. And then they announced the sellout at 14,994. Yeah. They are really harping on this sellout shit, but just like we can Google this. The, the I capacity. also, I mean, I, I people do care, so I shouldn't, but I don't give a shit. Like if all I care about is if it sounds good, looks but good. And like 14,000 people. Yeah. Sounds good. But so. <laughs> that, that has a lot of cachet with a lot of people. They like, just love, they love saying it. I uh. They they just but like notice like I don't even bring it up for AEW anymore because yeah. that man simply doesn't care about ratings because he has enough money to fund that company until he's dead and Dang. never broke. Uh, so Pra-praise he's praise Jesus. He doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't care about rating. There could be thirteen people there, and he will put on yeah a Will Osprey, which Daniel is why Sandwich. I get to watch like a like a ten week. It's really unprecedented. Subtly told story. Yeah, no <laughs> Days of our lives with tights, but they. Uh, that's an. I was thinking about that too. That's an unprecedented business model where you I, don't I care. Really if, like it. You, you don't care if you're successful. That's why I'm so thankful for it. Because but the never, thing I like is never going to be that popular. But you've never. So s- to have like a billionaire son yeah. happen to like the same shit right. that I do is wonderful. But it's never <laughs> happened with like uh, BattleBots or something like where you know BattleBots does very well by the way. Yeah, yeah. BattleBots <laughs> is fun. Uh, it's been around forever. But like I don't know a, a women's professional baseball league or something yeah. like that. Like no billionaire's ever been like I'm putting this on forever just because. I love this sport. Yeah, because there's you know not I mean? a ton of like billionaires' sons that are super nerds for yeah. any particular thing. It's just I've never <laughs> I can't think of another example of it. But uh, yeah, but they're obsessed with the details. Apparently, it's sold out. I guess uh, I can do it again. I, I don't need I don't need to hear Triple H's name or see his face. I kind of like him for like I, I, I don't like know him. a year. Like, I kind of like. I don't. Him. I like. I get it. You guys are half proud of your guy or whatever. Yeah. Uh, did you know it's, it's a, starting to feel a little like megalomaniacal. Did you though. know it was the Triple H era? <laughs> yeah, they may have mentioned that once or twice. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I misspoke. The Paul Levesque era. <laughs> Paul um, Triple H Levesque. You ever look at the subtitles that I put up for our shows? Oh yeah, I'm usually the one that's admitting fault. Of Saying some, some kind of nonsense. <laughs> yeah, or uh, like the, but for that raw where they became the sycophantic uh, uh, Paul Levesque worship at raw. I uh, the subtitle was the. Uh, the triple Paul Levesque, triple Paul Levesque H era. Yeah. <laughs> and, 
It's a little it's wordy. proud of that one. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> they probably don't have that trademark. We should get on that <laughs> in that order. Uh, well, the first um, match on SmackDown in the Paul Levesque era on this particular night was a number one contenders match for the WWE Championship, AJ Styles versus LA Knight, to see who's going to face Cody Rhodes at Backlash it's in the, France. The uh, As I uh, oh, alluded to in several texts throughout this week, Excuse me. undisputed, which is the goddamn dumbest thing yeah. ever. <laughs> undisputed specifically means there are no other titles in this weight class. Yeah. That is why this one is the undisputed title. The reason that we started even hearing the word undisputed in our lifetimes was because in boxing, there was a bunch of different heavyweight titles Mm -hmm. that had been broken up over the years. It was like WBO, IBF, a bunch of different titles. And then Tyson beat everybody, unified them all, and became then, for the first time, the undisputed. And people started referring to him as the undisputed heavyweight champion because he had all the titles. There are very much two... Heavyweight titles. Did you ever hear the George Carlin bit about that? Where he's talking about goofy phrases we have in English? Oh, yeah. And he's like, yeah. undisputed champion. Oh, if it's undisputed, it's all the fighting about. Yeah, what's the fight about? <laughs> it's, yeah, that's good. But, like, I'm pretty sure Damian Priest disputes Cody Rhodes' claim that he's the only heavyweight champ. The reason that <laughs> they did that is because they unified the titles back when in back when they brought back Big Gold. And they made a new title. No, but they— So it becomes disputed then. They <laughs> merged the two titles together, and that belt is now undisputedly the only world championship. Except for the one that Damian Priest has. Well, correct. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I'm, <laughs> so what, it's, in in 2024, yes, it's it it's, doesn't make it doesn't. Re- make it, I mean, really, the truth is, the, the day, reason they say it is because they think it sounds cool to say undisputed, which it does. Yeah. But the reason it sounds cool is because that means you're the top, only one. I'm yep. the only guy. Yeah. yeah. And that's the problem with having two world titles. Prior to you them, can't say undisputed. Prior to them giving <laughs> Seth Rollins the consolation prize title, yeah. it was technically it was for a while undisputed. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah, not for the past right. year or so. <laughs> But um, they call it the undisputed tag titles too. And I'm uh, like, yep. No, our truth has <laughs> one. <laughs> that is our false. There is another title. Um, but anyway, uh, AJ Styles and LA Knight are fighting for uh, contention yeah. for the undisputed uh, WWE Championship. They go 11 minutes and five seconds. Dude, you just did it now. Every time, I don't know if they're piping this in, I don't know if it's authentic from the crowd. Every time he hits some kind of offense, the yeah. crowd goes, "Yeah, yeah." That it's has super to, over. <laughs> that has to be like I'm going to end up in a padded room level of like <laughs> Clockwork Orange level torture, yeah. where you can't do anything without the crowd screaming back at you. Yeah. Um, and he's hijacking what, which I I'm fine with. Yeah. Um, I f- now I feel like I'm the crowd and you're LA Knight. Everything yeah. you say, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just wrote it super annoying, and AJ Styles is just goddamn spectacular. Yeah, he is. Um, still, too, still too small, but uh, I'll, I'll give him a break. Yeah. <laughs> it's just different. It's just different. Uh, I have no notes for the match except because I don't really love LA Knight matches, cause, but Nobody AJ Styles. LA Knight match. LA Knight doesn't <laughs> love LA Knight matches. But I love AJ Styles. Like, when yeah. AJ Styles gets to, like, cook and go into offense. Yeah, he's mode, AJ Styles. He's fucking perfect. He's, like, in the conversation for the greatest wrestler of all yeah, time. I, so, I can't. <laughs> I can, yeah. It, it was, it's so, like, off-putting. There's a reason see. Will Ospreay uses, like, three of his moves. Yeah. Because he's, like, he looks move. up to him. Yeah. Like, but, uh, no, AJ's so goddamn good. The end of the match... Um, LA Knight went for the BFT, AJ Styles. The big fucking giant. <laughs> the big, fi- <laughs> big yeah. fucking giant. <laughs> AJ Styles rolls under the bottom rope to escape it. Um, and AJ stands up, drops LA Knight's neck on the ring rope, pokes him in the eye, forearms him, phenomenal forearms him, gets the W, so it's Cody and AJ at Backlash. That's going to be very good. It's predicted. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be they fun. Did, very fun match. They did something cool later in the show with Cody, but we're not there yet. Uh, but yeah, that's... you have anything else on this match? <laughs> no. It's, I mean, it's what, it's like what we called, and it's a yeah. LA Knight yeah, yeah. match. Yep. <laughs> uh, they recapped last week what happened with uh, Solo, Paul Heyman, Jimmy Uso, and Tamatanga, uh, which we talked about at our last episode. You can go take a peek at that if you want. Basically, Solo is... a. Uh, you, Filling the power vacuum left by Roman Reigns, and he wants to be the leader. I'm um, absolutely sold on Tama Tonga after this 100%. episode. <laughs> but now I think Solo looks like soft because <laughs> well, he's got to be in there next to Tama. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he lo- someone put up a a stat. I, I I don't think I checked this. 
he's like 0 and 40 in his last 40 matches. Solo Sokoa. Really? Like if you count house shows and shit. Like he, he murdered. Oh, so he, he's like he he's never on house shows. Yeah, yeah. He's but like he murdered think, Cena. It was like the only singles thing I could think of him even last, doing. And that was in Summer. It was like yeah, it was Summer Slam. That was a while ago. Yeah. But uh, poor guy. But anyway, most qualified to be new Roman Reigns by by a country mile. They show P- Solo and Paul Hammond in the parking lot. Solo shows up in a very nice suit, and he's got a rock chain on. Uh, Paul Heyman says, nice threads. Tama Tonga just appears behind Paul Heyman <laughs> like a goddamn creep. Solo says, uh, meet the newest member of the bloodline, my MFT. What's that mean? What does that MFT mean? Motherfucking Tonga? <laughs> Could be. They don't say it. They say MFT a lot in this episode. <laughs> Solo then asks if Kevin Owens is here. Heyman presumes he is since the show already started. Uh, so then Heyman walks Solo and uh, Tamatanga up the ramp, and he never turns his back on him. It's yeah. a little subtle shit that yeah. Heyman's like a master at. Like he will not take his eyes off of Solo because he doesn't want to get crushed. Um, right? I, I I love the Heyman's reactions to uh, everything Solo does here. And Tom, Tamatanga is, I watched him in Japan. I watched his stuff. Mm. He's more intimidating in the two weeks in WWE than he was at any point. Yeah. And anything I saw in the last decade of his, his work in AJPW. They keep peppering him too. He's the son of Haku. And yeah, like, Haku, yeah. universally known as the t- one of the toughest men, if not the toughest man ever. Every be. time they say that, I'm like, I hope Haku didn't beat that poor, poor boy when he was a child. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they're they're doing good stuff here. They're doing subtle stuff, which I really like. In the ring, Nick Aldis um, is standing there. He's, he introduces Paul, Triple H, Levesque. Yeah. Yay. Triple H is hyping the bright future and acknowledging and respecting the history that made that future. And then he brings out A-Town Down Under, the current, uh, wait, what are we calling him now? WWE. Undisputed. <laughs> Undisputed tag team champion. So, Triple H actually says they are now, or maybe Nick Aldis, one of them said, they are now to be known as the WWE Tag Team Champions. Yeah. So that universal shit apparently doesn't apply to this title. When they posted it on Twitter, though, they did say on dispute. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> editing, fellas, editing. Uh, they showed the new tag titles, and they look fucking awesome. Love them. They are throwbacks to the ones Demolition held. Which Almost perfect. We, I would throw a little bit of color and just a small amount. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of blue in the middle or blue and red or something. Because they're all, it's like, it's, uh, it's like the callback title. to, the, well, I, and it reminded me a lot of the belt that we talked about liking quite a bit, the Eddie Guerrero world title. Yes, yes, Like yes. that from yes. that era. Um, the world championship looked very much like these tag titles. Yeah. Um, I, like, it must be different people doing, designing the belts for the different shows. Yeah. Because I pretty much universally like or think that every belt that they've introduced on SmackDown has been at least an improvement. And some of which, like these, I really just like. Yeah. Uh, and everything that they do on, on Raw, I think, looks it's like terrible toys, like old like left in the sandbox all summer yeah. toys. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> I got me. Uh, weren't the American chopper guys doing belts for a while? They were, yes. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so there you go. Um, I just want these new belts look fucking great. Yeah, Triple great. H goes to handshake, uh, Grayson Waller, and he, Grayson Waller Grayson kind of avoids it and then shakes a uh. Uh, Austin Theory's hand instead. Nick Aldis gets right in his face, says if you disrespect Triple H like that again, these titles will be gone. And then he announces a fatal four-way for the number one contendership for said tag team titles, which is up next. So that was a segment. It was basically a not-as-fun version of the one they did on Monday Night Raw because our truth was not yeah. uh, in this one. Could have just done it with Nick Aldis. I didn't need Paul of big head out there. Again. How else are you going to know that the future <laughs> is bright without... <laughs> Triple H being there. I'm getting the, a Dana White vibe from him these days. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very good. The number one contenders tag team uh, match to see who's going to fight a town down under included the street pop. My whole mouth fell up the there. Three, street the poppets street, would be a good the like <laughs> The Mary Street Poppets. <laughs> the Street Profits, New Catch Republic, Legado del Fantasma, represented by Angel and Umberto and AOP. This went 17 minutes and 14 seconds. It did not start yet, though, because they went to break, and when they came back, uh, they were backstage with Kayla Braxton and Naomi. Why did they do this? I don't know. Well, I hate it so much. <laughs> like I was expecting, I had to rewind you get and be fired like, did I miss a whole a match? Because that was a match. I was like, cool. Yeah. This is going to be a good match. Yeah. Now we're at commercial, and then you come back and you're like, did I miss the match? Why yeah. are we talking to Caleb Braxton right now? 
I don't know, but she's talking to Naomi saying she earned a number one contention last week. Maybe Triple H should keep his ass in the back so we can fucking yeah. look at the way that they lay these shows out yeah. a little better. Yeah. Kind of a, <laughs> a couple misses all, all around in wrestling this week. with, with <laughs> Production the misses for yeah, everybody. For, yeah, For sure. <laughs> Uh, she's saying, uh, Caleb Braxton saying to Naomi, you entered a number one contention match last week, putting you in line uh, oh, to, to to fight Bailey. And uh, you think this is going to interfere with your with your friendship? Naomi's no. That's basically it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she, it's, and they're really hyping that it's been two years since um, Naomi's last singles championship match on SmackDown. Wasn't she gone from the company for a considerable she was amount gone of time? For, yeah, like nine so, months or something. Yet. It's like me saying, like, oh, it's been. It's been about 25 years since you played for the Cleveland Indians. Like, yeah, when I was fucking eight, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, though. Uh, and then next week, it's Naomi versus Bailey for the SmackDown. Oh, Jesus. Women's Universal. <laughs> sure, it's undisputed. It's not SmackDown. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's undisputed. <laughs> I get my words mixed up. Uh, in case you forgot, uh, we have a number one contenders tag team title match. Uh, that they cut right back to. You better call. I thought, I thought you were going to do that. In case you forgot. You better call somebody. Oh. He does sit in his fat ass next to Triple H and Gorilla for all these shows. Sure. He's such a jerk off. I can't believe he's <laughs> Triple H's right hand man. <laughs> well, nothing says super professional <laughs> like a back of your head tattoo <laughs> and, and dreadlocks. I got a hot take. Um, Karrion Cross noticed this when he was walking to the ring. He's got real... Pre 2011 CM Punk vibes. <laughs> yeah, I can he, see it. He really does. He doesn't have the in ring prowess well, nor the, the ability to yeah, talk, but uh, his vi- vibes, yeah, for vibe, sure. yeah. I'm like, man, I want to see more of him. Now, every time he's doing anything but wrestling, I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I'm like, oh man, this guy's captivating. There's something here. He uh, Bell does have to ring though, Dave. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> but you, would, but I mean, this company, that's not a yeah, it's not that big a deal. Like no. Jay Uso. Uh, Enjoyed him very much Jimmy this week. Uso. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so a, c- a couple cool, I mean, they beat the shit out. This was a really fun match. Yeah, it was. Uh, this yes, was, it was a sprint tag team match. Uh, I will be okay if the Tower of Doom goes away completely, uh, where you sit on guys on the top rope, and then one guy goes to superplex, and another guy goes to powerbomb that guy, and it then takes one guy's pushing it. It doesn't look good, though. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It, it did it, once in TNA, and they do it a hundred times. And since. it like the payoff isn't great, and then it, it, the setup takes way too long to get to a thing that doesn't pay off great. Similarly, but I did like this match in general, though. No, like, no, no. And this, I'm, I'm just nitpicking about. And this isn't even particular to this match. Yeah, Tower of Doom that can and then disappear. It can go away <laughs> completely. And also, could we stop like? pooling each other outside to catch big spot dives like outside the ring. I'm fucking tired of that. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because t- you just said it. Like It doesn't pay off. The, it doesn't. Everyone knows it's not the finish. So what are you doing it for? It also like you see it coming then a mile away. That's yeah. why I like how Darby Allen's dive so much because it's always just one person yeah. and you never see it coming. And it's like a surprise every time. Cash Wheeler's got one of those too. He, he Cash comes. Wheeler just becomes Darby <laughs> Allen in big matches. <laughs> oh, we he talked about it on the paper. Said that like, last week. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's incredible. Darby Allen. That's um, funny. Uh, but yeah, when they when everybody gets in the big group, yeah. you're like, okay, I see what's coming, and it's not that impressive when you know it's coming. You're watching it like, what is cool about a dive or a tope, whatever you want to call it, is like it's a surprise thing. Yeah. It's supposed to be a surprise it's thing. To be. Like if everybody gets in a big group, they're and all waits hugging for it, each other, like, like yeah, helping. It's each safer, other. but like just don't do it. Then. No, <laughs> like if you don't feel comfortable doing it, just don't do it. They were doing that too. They were like helping each other, like. A, Doing like assisted offense and he said, "I'm like it's fatal four way, man. What are you doing? It's yeah. This is a title match. You should be trying to win. It shouldn't be cooperative or a, a contention. <laughs> no, no, not at all. But uh, I mean, credit where credit's due. Uh, like the first big spot match I or spot note I had in this match, Angel does like a running soccer kick to Montez yeah. when he's sitting on the ropes, and PK. it sounded brutal. Yeah, brutal, and it looked brutal too. It was great. Uh, I love they, the PK." <laughs> No, there's a penalty kick. That's like every day. Well, he's on AEW television. They call yeah. it a PK, but yeah, that's what it stands for. It's big, Cervantes thing. Big old soccer kick. penalty kick. Yeah. Um, the, what was the, how the, oh, Legato del Fantasma did a doomsday drop kick on Tyler Bate. That looked yeah, awesome. It was great. Um, and then my favorite wrestler on planet earth, Angelo Dawkins comes in <laughs> and he pounces Umberto into space. He is still out there. He's yeah, orbiting Jupiter I, right I, now. I, I love that pounce of his too. He's like, 
why do I like him so much? He's great. He's why, so he, good. Yeah, because I think he figured his you have gear, a good eye for talent. I think he figured really his gear out. Good wrestler. He looked, Dave and I on the other episode. If you guys haven't uh, checked it out yet, our AEW episode that that uh, will drop the same as same time as this one. Uh, we decided that our favorite wrestlers are uh, Angela Dawkins for Dave and Willow Nightingale for myself, <laughs> respectively. <laughs> we just I don't know. We're just seeing things differently. <laughs> just, yeah. Um. And then, uh, yeah, super fun match. Like, I'm not going to list off all the spots. I I would go back and watch this one again because it was a sprint and everyone's trying to get as much in as they can. I did watch some of this match. It was a long sprint. Uh, I'm, like, I, I went right back and watched, uh, like, bits and pieces of yeah. it at least, uh, and, like a second viewing. So, yeah, that it was, was a great, really good match. It was a ton of fun. Um, the finish saw the Street Profits um, do a – it's called – they're calling it the Revelation. It is a sky-high slash neck breaker. They did it on uh, Angel Garza. I for feel the like w. there's a big uptick in usage in the last month of the Sky High. <laughs> I love D'Lo. I love, his move set was yeah. like when I used to do Creator Wrestler. It, it was all D'Lo Brown. I would do a bunch of D'Lo Brown <laughs> stuff, and then Al Snow Snowplow was my finish <laughs> for like every guy that I created. Oh man, <laughs> I love. Yeah, he can come back. I'm good with D'Lo Brown. Put him in the Pride. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Uh, get rid of, or the- you know, just don't. Group everybody by race anymore. We could do that too. It's wrestling. We don't, we don't have any other choices. But yeah, so it's going to be um, Street Profits versus A Town Down Under, presumably at uh, Backlash. Yeah. Right. Maybe maybe they can squeeze a good match out of A Town Down Under because yeah. they're pretty talented. Yeah. Um, we had a recap of Rhea Ripley relinquishing the title this past Monday. We yeah. saw that 80 times this, uh, over the next <laughs> two shows, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. Backstage, we had was it Byron Saxton? He's back. I, that's what I <laughs> my reaction to. I'm like, am I? Did I have a stroke, or was he gone for 30 years, yeah. and now he's here? Is like the Rock going to come make fun of him, I or like the coach coming back too? Like, what's going on here? I didn't want to sound <laughs> stupid. They to be fired like, him for was he on commentary? He was for a long like time. For yeah. before this group, yeah. right? He was on commentary. He was before they did the I believe last so. change up. Like, I'm not, dude, I can't keep up. They changed so when, many when times. When Booker so. T went to NXT and stuff, like I think Byron Saxon was on one of the shows. It's hard mm-hmm. to keep track. It sounds of correct what you're saying. Yeah, uh, Byron Saxon is uh, uh, interviewing Bailey, asking her where her head's at before her match against Naomi tonight. Bailey says, um, since she's the only women's champion in WWE right now, makes her appreciate the title. A little bit more since and Rhea Ripley dropped, but apparently... Fuck Kyrie Sane and yeah, yeah, uh, damage control. <laughs> uh, she said things are bound to change with the draft coming up and is excited she is, as she is to face Naomi, the one thing won't change that won't change is her losing. I had a question about this. So if the draft... Let's say the draft is Friday and you have a title match the following Monday and you get drafted away from that match. Do you get to keep your title shut? That's, you're asking uh, deeper questions than I think the Fed wants you to ask, Dave. <laughs> it's, the answer, it really the true, bu- the real answer is yeah. we're not going to book somebody who we are <laughs> uh, about to book to be drafted uh, to, to be in a title match. They've, <laughs> they've done dumb stuff like that before. Hey, uh, hey, Vince fucking made I, JR learn about his big giant life change on air. Dude, did you it's read his one of book? the harder, yeah. Under the Black Hat? Yes. Like, he goes into depth but about because that. it's a monstrous thing to do it's to a, somebody. It's it wildly, was his second in command at the time, yeah, it was too. wildly com- humiliating. Shit. I, gotta, yeah. I have to get through one of these while I talk about that guy. We should do a Vince jar. Like a swear <laughs> yeah. jar, but we have to put a quarter in every time we bring up Vince. Uh, backstage again, we have Solo, Sako, and Paul Heyman. Heyman's apologizing to Solo for being unable to find Kevin Owens who they're searching for. Solo walks off ahead of Heyman and he goes into the gorilla position. Heyman says he's not trying to piss off Solo, but he's making decisions that aren't his to be made yet. One day, yes, but not now. Uh, These are decisions that can only be made by one man. Solo's asked if he's done yet. Heyman asks if Solo's MFT is coming with. Again, this MFT shit keeps popping up. Solo (laughs) smirks and he just shows him his thumb. (laughs) Like, look, I got a thumb. Uh, Illegally taped up thumb. Yeah. Super, super overly taped up. Uh, and then they both walk to the ring after Solo's music hits. Umaga have any kids? Umaga? I think so. I want I want him to be a... Did Umaga... His bloodline to be a part of the bloodline. Umaga children. <laughs> Zilla Fatu. They just signed F, uh, Jacob Fatu. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, probably. So he's probably going to come in. Oh, Umaga's son now training... Under WWE legend following recent incarceration. So who is he training under? Let me see. 
Paul W. Booker T. Um, All right. I, I think so. <laughs> Booker yeah. T. I, how does he find the time? I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I think commentating it's good. for NXT and doing just nonstop podcasts. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, in the ring, we have Solo, Sokolo, and, and Paul Heyman after they come back from commercial. There's a large We Want Roman champ, and Paul Heyman looks like he's choked up and he's about to reply. Yeah. Solo grabs the mic out of his hand. Solo tries talking, and now Solo is getting the Dominic Mysterio treatment. Yeah, where he is. Getting... Roman's gonna be so hot when he comes back. <laughs> oh, they're just sal- they're they're doing this is the Lion King man. Yeah, they're like salting the earth for the eventual uprising of the yes. of the hero. Um, and he can't talk. Every time he tries to talk, the crowd's booing him like crazy. But he eventually gets it out. Solo says, "Last week I had to lose a brother in order to find me a new one. My MFT, Tama Tonga, motherfucking Tama." They, <laughs> or Tonga. <laughs> Tama, 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 Tonga. Tama, uh, they go Tama, to the Tama. entrance ramp and they show uh, Kevin Owens is just ejected onto the <laughs> rampway. <laughs> Two shows where we've, we've seen ejections. Yeah. And he's bleeding pretty bad from the head. It's so, like, it's, it looked when gnarly. was the last time? I know I, I kind of asked this, but it was a different thing for Cody's. Yeah. When was the last time that somebody was allowed to blade on regular WWE programming, like, in the ring? He wasn't even in the ring. But, I mean, yeah. they're having a match, and he's bladed. <sighs> to the, I mean, long enough where I can't think of anything. It's like, it's that it's that Eddie Guerrero era, right? I mean, that's I can't think of anybody in the modern era. I know, like, it they've had the like, hard way, like, uh, um, like Lesner, Orton, Orton had Lesnar yeah. do with the hard way, like, and that was on a pay-per-view. You're talking about, like, on regular TV. Like, blading on, t- on TV, yeah. Great question. I don't know. I mean, had Cody do it, but that was in like in a controlled backstage type of yeah. environment too. So, well, if you know the answer, phones are uh, phones are open. <laughs> Roman used a blood capsule uh, like ten years it's ago brutal. or something. Terrible. <laughs> um, so Kevin Owens is bleeding. Tamatonga throws him further up the rampway, um, and then the refs start like helping Kevin Owens up. Uh, Tamatonga goes into the ring. He puts up his finger. The, the one, the bloodline post, and Solo does it, and then Heyman, like, begrudgingly does yeah. it. Heyman looks like a, like he's having a Stockholm syndrome. He looks like he's, he's like, just constantly nauseated. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Kevin Owens rushes back to the ring, attacks Tamatanga, throws Solo in, uh, Solo throws KO into the steps, and then they fight into the, oh, wait, wait. Solo throws into steps. I don't know who threw who into the steps. Somebody. I, I'm missing it now. KO got some offense here. Yeah. Like in- they fight into the ring. Solo spikes KO. Tamatonga continues the beating. He attacks security and then gets a chair. Nick Aldis comes out and he warns both of them to stop. And Solo throws the chair out of the ring and then they leave. So it was somehow those same security guards from AEW. <laughs> just, yeah, again, two big what, monsters what is, everywhere. <laughs> what is with this company, this industry just, where you're allowed to beat up the help and not get a find or anything like that? It's weird. Again, third segment in the row. There's a lot of segments back to back. They, they one, pack two, stuff in three, on SmackDown, man. Like four. So they go to the parking lot. Nick Aldis and Paul Heyman are there. Nick Aldis asks Paul Heyman if he was aware that Tamatago's rental car has been smashed into <laughs> Kevin Owens and his two cars just like T-boned. I like um, Heyman's reaction. This was not authorized. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Aldis says, on my show, we settle in the ring. I will not tolerate this kind of savage behavior and make sure that the bloodline understands if you don't, the consequences are equally savage. And then he goes, losing isn't the only thing that has consequences. Yeah. Nice continuity. Yeah. And I like I like that Nick Aldis is a like he's a he's their authority figure, but he is you can't like intimidate him because he's a big giant like in his prime wrestler. Right. <laughs> so I it's confusing to me why he's the GM at all. But yeah. like uh but he's like you can't every authority figure ever except for Triple H. Right. Uh, you were able to like kind of bully as a wrestler, and yeah, you, all this you just can't because he's like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> like he yeah. could have a match with you right now. Like, um, he's an impressive kind of dude. I think it was here too. I didn't make the note of it, but I think he made the mention at some point around here that with the draft coming up, he might have mentioned it with A Town Down Under. But like he's like all there's gonna be a lot of executive eyeballs like on the show. So he's like, it's like when you're showing your house, you're like, we need this place to be spick and span yeah. because we have, you know, business he, to, to conduct. I here. like his character as a, as a boss. He yeah. feels like a boss. It's usually it's like e- either evil or a pushover. Yeah. And this dude just feels like a boss who like has the backing of the company behind him and he can like, he knows it. So he yeah. can confidently tell people what they got to do. Yeah. It's nice yeah. for its change. It's, you know, yes, you don't very, see that very, very often in wrestling. No. Um, what we do see very often in wrestling, though, is um, people who have the similar lineage 
um, ethnicity fighting each other. Oh, yeah. How do you like that for a segue? <laughs> Carlito versus <laughs> Santos Escobar for uh, a seven minute and 34 second match. The crux of this is uh, Santos is saying he had nothing to do with the attack on Dragon Lee that took him out of WrestleMania. Uh, Santos was on Raw this week too, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. 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 He's good. Yeah. He's good. He's like, not interesting, but he's good. Mm. Uh, I get, I have some thoughts about that match, too. Oh, right, we'll get there. Well, uh, for wrong. <laughs> uh, I said the uh, reason that Santos Escobar left the LW is because Mysterio brought in Carlito without consulting him, which is bringing us to Carlito fighting Santos Escobar. It's good that it's like in the middle of a like smackdown. Uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a nice payoff, right? Uh, anyway, uh, Santos Escobar won with a middle of a match. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go talk to Carlito for a while. It's it's who it's whatever. It's, it's like a who like they didn't need to have a match. It's another who done it. Like yeah. who attacked Dragon Lee? That's fine. Uh, maybe it was Mercedes Martinez. <laughs> uh, in the this is different. I like this in the sky in a skybox. They show Mercedes Martinez is on the AEW women's roster, isn't she? It, it could be her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kayla Braxton is interviewing Damage Control from a skybox, which I really yeah. liked. Uh, Dakota Kai is. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Damage Control is still says Dakota Kai says Damage Control is still the most <laughs> dominant force in WWE. She's not willing to say that Eos Sky is a former champ. She's getting real salty yeah. about that. God, the Kubuki Warriors are still tag champs, and that's not going to change. And then Jade Cargill's music hits. And they're at the next box. Her and uh, Bianca Belair, they're at the next box over. Which... Well, it couldn't have been a sellout then, Dave, because those two boxes were occupied by talent. You're not wrong. <laughs> well, Triple H said we got a full house. So, but uh, well, yeah, I like, thought He's that... the Pope. You have to believe everything he says. <laughs> <laughs> that I thought it was wildly coincidental that uh, out of all these boxes, they happen to have yeah. it happened the first time. I do like that they were up in the box because it does play into the match later. That that's going to happen. Um, Did you see Tiffany Stratton is evidently a listener to the program? Why is that? Because she in an interview this week said that uh, her and um, Bianca Belair have a lot of physical attributes that are similar and yeah. that's why they have a lot of very good chemistry in the ring together which is essentially what i said why they should have been the tag team that they had together yeah. rather than jade and bianca because because it exposes uh, jade a little bit uh tiffany stratton if you would like to be a guest on the blue <laughs> thunder pod you can look at it in frankfurt illinois yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. just uh, call us at the number on the bottom of your screen fly in we'll go pick you up at o'hare or something <laughs> we'll go get portillo's um they did this is another cool thing they did cuddy cody cody Cuts, kid cuddy is there kid cuddy yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna pursue the happiness and i know it's a good song sully cuddy like the remix too cody <laughs> cuts a promo from london england which was apparently an adjacent live event that they had, uh, and he's hyping AJ Styles' win. So this is pretty cool. And I'm yeah. like, I've never seen this before. And it's also no. showing, like, wow, these guys are big. Because I was wondering, like, why is Cody, this is the first show he's not on it. It's mm -hmm. SmackDown, and it's, like, right before the draft. Cody's think, missed, by the way, when he's not around. A bit, a little bit. <laughs> we don't know what we're going to talk about when he's not around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cody calls AJ the modern excellence of execution. Didn't love that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just not a great comp. No. We, uh, modern HBK would be much better. Much better. Much <laughs> better. Uh, he takes the belt off at some point, and all you hear is... <laughs> <laughs> the Velcro. <laughs> it just makes it sound so... It looks so cool. And it, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, the Velcro belt. He's hyping uh, that they have a contract signing next week. Um, draft day, which is... Uh, when the, uh, It's right now. We're going to do it at the end of the show. It's... Yes. <laughs> Up next, they have the women's championship match, Naomi versus Bailey. They went 11 minutes, 20 seconds. I think Bailey has new music. I think. I don't know. I did not notice. And maybe I jumped on the show or like did, coming back from a commercial or something. I didn't quite get there because I would. I think I would have noticed that. Yeah. Is it? Uh, it's like it starts with it. Oh, more baby faces. And then like it's got more of like a okay. like a like a four on the floor kind of beat to it. Mm. I think. Sounds pretty uh, standard WWE generic. Yeah. Nah. It sounded super generic, yeah. Why are they doing that to everybody? <laughs> like, music matters. Yes, music <laughs> matters. The only reason I even watch Nakamura anymore is because he, <laughs> he, he walks out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my next note was Naomi moves so <laughs> slow. You hate Naomi almost as much as you hate Mercedes I, Money. <laughs> I don't hate Naomi. She just, there were parts of the, and I tried to like, Re kind of reset. My I actually I pay closer attention to, and yeah, she it's a little moves um, so slow. It's methodical. 
We'll I, go. Like again, I have I have trouble deciphering. She's not moving any slower than Damien Priest. <laughs> like, but like she'll do move, she'll do her little like jump like what's it called the rear view. Yeah. Lightning fast. Yeah. But then she'll do other moves where like it's comic. It's like she's moving like Orange Cassidy, like slow. Yeah. It's like the. It's the the setups, the stuff. It, it, it make what it, what it does. I think what and the, the reason it stands out to you, I think, is it makes it feel a little bit more choreographed. It's the getting into that positions could, for stuff. That could be. It's not. Doesn't feel natural. Doesn't it's, feel like an athletic move no. to get into the spot. Uh, and then when you don't do that athletically, if you don't do the getting into your position athletically, yeah, it looks like you're doing a dance more than a fight. Right. Um, and I think that yeah, I I'm with you. Like her her actual moves the moves themselves i think she does it at an appropriate speed sure uh it's but it's the like get the setups and stuff take longer than they should yeah which makes it look like you she runs a rope you know slow. what's gonna happen she well, looks that's, like I'm but kid- she's about to run like when she's like okay i'm gonna go run now and like i feel like all can, the basically all the stuff that isn't the move specific like yeah. I think before I was looking at the moves and be like, no, she's hitting that with the right kind of force or whatever. But ever, you're right though. All the setup stuff, like, and the rope, rope running, like, where when you're getting to a place in the ring, everything she does there yeah. looks more uh, methodical, like, or, or contrived, yeah. and it makes it look like it, like, it makes it look cooperative. We don't want this to look cooperative. Yes. We want to make it want to look like a fight. So <laughs> I, I agree with everything you said, and I think the cooperative part is what really bugs me because I'm supposed to believe that the person you're doing this to is just going to voluntarily yeah. slowly wait for you to wait get for to you a spot. To yeah. That's why I've never had a problem with botches. People always are bitching about botches and matches. If somebody doesn't get hurt, a botch is a good thing occasionally yeah. because it would happen in a fight. Right. Like if people were, if fights really did go down, like in a way that they go down in wrestling where people do four fifties or whatever, yeah. like as a thing in real fights. Well, sometimes that would get screwed up and you right. would like trip or whatever. So that's not a, that's not really a problem in a match, but like yep. methodically getting into a position that makes it look like you're cooperative. That's a big problem. hundred percent. Yep. Good. I'm glad you came around yep. on that one. Yep. So like, mm-hmm. and it makes me not like, I love Bailey, but like, I'm kind of can't watch Naomi matches. And I'm not be- really as interested. In no. After, g- um, Maybe I should not have listened to you because I think it ruined Bay- <laughs> ruined uh, Naomi for me. <laughs> and I like Bailey matches are generally pretty fun. Yeah, I like Bailey. She thumps the hell out of people. Yeah, uh, but the finish had uh, nobody being thumped. Uh, beside, nope that's that's a bad transition. Tiffany Stratton attacked Tiffany. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, <laughs> Tiffany uh, Stratton attacks Bailey on the outside. Just uh, if you attack people on the outside, is that a DQ? Uh, only if you, well, nothing is consistent in the Fed, but, uh, it's supposed to be if, if you get attacked first, then it's like, if you're, if you come out and the person that's involved yeah. in the match hits you first, um, then you can respond on the outside generally, yeah. but like, uh, on the outside, yeah. on the inside, like you, nobody DQ. can do anything. Yeah. yeah. But on the outside, usually you can defend yourself, but it's supposed to be a DQ if you attack somebody. Uh, on the outside, if you uh, if unprompted, you just like I come out in your match and you happen to be out by the announce table and I hit you, it's supposed to be a DQ. Okay, okay. I had a go- I was like googling wrestling rules. I'm like, oh, we got that's a stop tough this. one because it changes like a lot yeah. too. <laughs> like, uh, also found quite a few opinions about uh, guys that uh, have like. Uh, what do they used to be called? Live journals. <laughs> so like guys oh, yeah, are like, yeah. a lot of like really <laughs> well thought out. Like all right, fellas. Um, I mean, I I do talk for like seven hours a week about sure. the same kind of stuff that they're probably you live journaling. You and me both, man. <laughs> so they have. Um, she does the prettiest moonsaults ever on both in the ring. I really like that. Everyone that could have potentially wanted to interfere in this match was in a skybox. Yeah, yeah, couldn't come down. So it felt. Super heelish on Tiffany Stratton's part. Super opportunistic. Makes I mean, she I already loved her. Yeah. Like I I like her even more now. They're just fleshing her Straight. character out even even better. Um, that was the end of SmackDown. I, I thought it was a pretty good episode of SmackDown. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I got, got we got in. like new cool belts, and I got to see Kevin Owens' blade. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, you're always gonna win with me if you get Kevin Owens in a match, like a very physical match, even if he's not uh, coming out on top, and he gets the blade. Uh, Tom. Tonga is the star of the bloodline right now. Yep. Um, and I love Paul, Paul Heyman, all the work that Paul Heyman's doing right now. It's going to be f- funny and interesting and fun to see 
Paul Heyman be the damsel in distress that gets rescued by <laughs> Ro- returning superhero Roman Reigns. I, I it should be a lot of fun. It'll be. Uh, let's just hope they don't put him in a plexiglass full of concrete. Kill <laughs> <laughs> um, the wise men uh, yeah. with lightning powers. <laughs> I am adding columns so we could have our drafts taken seriously. We're going to do the draft after we do Raw really quick. So Monday Night Raw was in Columbus, Ohio at the Schottenstein Center. It was on the yeah, campus right. of Ohio State. Uh, Did you watch this episode uh, full on, Dave? Uh, Whole well, thing all the way through? We're going to find out, aren't <laughs> we? It did say three hours this time, so I have to assume I did. If you didn't listen last week, I didn't take his like I I, I didn't do per match notes. Yeah, yeah. I just did all my goofy thoughts right. this time. Yeah, so yeah, I, I got you. Boo. I, we may not catch it if you get something got edited out. It was <laughs> listening back to last week. It was really fun. Us oh, coming to the conclusion. Uh, like, loved it. <laughs> wait a minute. The uh, it opens with. Um, Can I actually? I want to say something to you, that. You have point. to. I. Uh, like listening back to it was a lot of fun. Also made me realize that I must have sounded like a grumpy old dick to Dave the last like <laughs> four draws that I was like, oh my god, the pacing on these shows is trash. Realizing that like no, the ones he's been watching have been basically been absolutely fine. <laughs> so I must have just been like sounding like you only are saying that because it's the Fed and you hate them. I'm like, yeah. No, 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 no. It's because the pacing on the shows is trash. That is pretty funny. Um. But, uh, um... Jay, uh, Jay Uso, Damian Priest have a chat? Not right, not oh. yet. They had a. Uh, it opens with developing story. That's, oh, that's the first right. thing you yeah. see. Michael Cole and Pat McAfee are on the ring and they're hyping the two title matches for tonight. One will be for the Battle Royal for the women's title, and the other one is a tag team title match. And they said this is only the fourth time ever that a battle royal will determine. They just said the champion. Do they mean the women's champion? I don't care. No, it's, the, ch- it's the overall champion or yeah. like any kind of champion. Uh, they were really working hard to tr- convince me that it was a good idea to have a battle royal for the title. Yeah. And unless you got Ric Flair in it, it's a bad idea. Uh, da, da, da. So then, yeah, Jey Uso started in ring. Uh, he's, like I mentioned, he's turned what? Oh, no. I said this about LA Knight. He's turned yeah into what? Yeah, two different guys have done this LA, <laughs> with yeah, different J- words. Jay Uso has turned what into yeet, yeet, and he leans into it, man. Yeah, he starts saying stuff. That's all I wrote. He started saying stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jay Uso. He's not. I mean, he's good here, but yeah. he's not saying anything that no. matters. Like he starts saying stuff, and then Damian Priest walks out. Damian Priest is wearing um, Jordan Twelve retro playoff yeah, shoes. Yeah, I did. God damn it, they're pretty. Those are dope ass shoes. Uh, I did uh, like. The chasm, we'll get, we'll get into what they say mm-hmm. in a second here, but the chasm between Damian Priest and Jey Uso on the mic is vast, and I don't know if I would have brought it to as much attention as this back and forth did, because oh. one guy sounded like scripted as fuck, well, and the other guy sounded like he had a bunch of charisma and was talking. Yeah. Yeet. <laughs> Yeet. Uh, <laughs> Damian Priest talks about one specific night last year when Jey Uso beat Damian Priest ass so bad that Damian Priest went up to Jay in the locker room and said he earned his respect, which is why he wanted Jay Uso in Judgment Day. And then they went out drinking. Did they ask him to be in the Judgment Day? I don't remember that. I don't, I don't remember know. that. <laughs> it it might have happened. I just have no recollection of it. They were, it seems like the Judgment Day was pretty busy, as far as my memory goes. Yeah. We had some Sami Zayn stuff happening for a year, yeah. and then some Cody Rhodes stuff happening for a year, and then like a few months of The Rock. And there's, So I don't know when Damian uh, Priest was... Jay uh, might have asked him to be a driver or something. Could have <laughs> like, been. Speaking of, that was a funny line. So they, after Damian Priest said all that, he's like, "Oh, me and you, we went out drinking." And Jay really quickly goes, "I took an Uber." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah, probably, Jay was good. Jay was really good. Probably here. winking at his brother not taking an yeah. Uber. Uh, <laughs> Jay said, uh, "He said that Jay said we were next." Damian Priest was proud to stand next to him. Says he was right. Actually, he's being half right because he, Damian Priest, was next. The belt shows why he was next. Why he's now. Yeah. You're the first person on a list of people that the machine is going to feed to make sure it looks good on me. Um, and he, uh, that's it. That's, uh, oh, no, there's more. Sorry. Uh, Jay Uso said, the only reason you're the leader of the Judgment Day is because Rhea Ripley got hurt. You know what that makes you to me right now? Dominic's Mysterio's bitch. Yeah. That's right. Jay was good here. Yep. Fired Jay up, was, too. Like, he, he took the shades off partway through. Yeah. 
yeah, good. Very good. Yeah. Even when he was doing his, like, catchphrase Uzi stuff, he was doing it with, like, intensity in his eyes, not breaking uh, his stare at Damien Priest the whole time. Yeah. I believed everything he was he was saying. Yeah. Um, I'm making I'm making brackets. Sorry. I should have done this before. Uh, J- J- Uso said he'll be champion. Duh. J.D. McDonough comes out. And he tries to super kick Jamie or Jay Uso, but he hits Damian Priest instead. Yeah. D- uh, sloppy, bad, slow. Super JD kick. McDonough. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Just like, do they, did, did he do something to someone? It feels like blackmailing it him. It feels like the old days or something. It really does. Uh, uh, where you would get bullied on, like, he on air. He never gets <laughs> over. Like, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> And, uh, he's pretty talented in the ring. Yeah. I yeah he, but like, there's no shortage of guys that are talented in the ring now. Like, yeah. it is just like, ugh, what a whipping boy. Uh, so after that, we had the World Tag Team Championship match, DIY versus Awesome Truth. This was 10 minutes and 7 seconds. DIY's theme song reminds me. You, uh, Ooh, I, I wanted to mention oh, my, yeah, yeah. my take on Damien Priest. I have yep. a, so Damien Priest is just, I, he ain't it, man. He's not. No. Like, I, I know he's got the belt on his shoulder now, and he's got a deep voice, and he's big, and he's got a, like, good look. Right. But I really, really think he is Lance Archer without the in-ring talent or charisma. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's just what he is. That's fair. I, I don't, I don't get it and like when you put him in there with a guy like Jey Uso who has like a natural connection with the crowd yeah. and when he talks sounds like a person talking it really stands out that Damien Priest should not be at this level on the card correct to me at least you're not no you're <laughs> well they got to do something with him um I'd rather see Cameron Grimes oh, 100% <laughs> like, take the judgment day to the moon yeah DIY's theme song reminds me of Youth of a Youth of the Youth of a Nation by POD. You remember yeah. that song? Yes, of course we I do. Are, we are. Youth of a Nation. Uh, I just have it was a good tag match. I don't like matches where the endings never in doubt. Uh I have a couple of notes. It's our truth. Our truth has got way better flow than he used to. Yeah. He did his rap on his way out to the ring, and I was like, when did our truth learn how to rap? Because yeah. he used to be terrible, and now he's pretty good. And maybe it's the confidence that comes along with like I an actual push for the first time in his career. So. Uh he sounded great. Miz does not sound good. Nah. <laughs> he continues to be the Miz. Uh at the start of this match, uh, I took the note that they should mention Triple H a few more times. Because Michael <laughs> Cole he does it three times in the first two minutes of this match. Um Miz sucking ass. Priest even sounds like a video game character when he's done a backstage segment. Okay, so that's yeah. I'm on to the next thing. That's yeah. <laughs> and that was pretty pretty much the the whole kit and caboodle. Um, I just don't. I don't know. I, I I need to figure out a way to enjoy something when I know how it's gonna end. You know what I mean? Yeah. I for me, it has to be just a killer match. Yeah. Because uh, like the like SmackDown had. A fatal four way where I was pretty sure where they were going with it. Yeah. And it's like that was really fun. It was good. I, was really I, I knew how Kyle Fletcher versus Will Ospreay was ending. Yeah. Enjoyed the hell it was out really of it. It was really fun. I, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Backstage they go back to your Oh, I'm sorry. Um the match ends with they're calling it the truth crushing finale <laughs> for the W Gargano. Truth was good in the ring here too, by the way. Of like better he is. than again. Probably was never it it wasn't truth. In the past, he was always good in the ring, but he was like for the last 15 years, it's been in like uh 24 7 opponents, yeah, so not very high level. <laughs> um, but he's looking great lately, yeah. like, well, he's, he's guys like 60 years old, again, whatever he is. It's, he's it's the motivation, great. Thing. You just like, sent me a picture of him with like the Tupac yeah, with Tupac, and, and he's got he's got a hairdo, like, yeah. uh, he was in Boys to Men or something. <laughs> he's, he's got demolition man hair, <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah, <laughs> uh. He's been around a long ass time, is yeah. what I'm saying. And uh, he looks great. Like, yeah. yeah, big fan. So Gargano goes to shake hands with uh, Truth and, and Miz after, and they do the handshake and the hug. Uh, Ch- Champa does not. Champa turns yeah. away defiantly. And hmm. I sincerely hope <laughs> that they turn this guy back to Goldie. Brut- brutal heel Goldie, Goldie Champa because that was one of the best underrated heels. It's my favorite wrestling heel has ever seen in the history of NXT. I think. Good lord, was he good? Yeah, psychotically absolutely. good, incredible. It, uh, very Paul Heyman esque too. The uh, 
accentuate the positives, hide the negatives. Yeah. I never one time during that run thought of him as like an undersized guy no. or whatever. Not until the main roster that when they like make it a point to point it out for some reason. Uh, I never thought of him as like undersized. I just thought of him as a scary motherfucker. <laughs> like, right. So yeah, I'd love to see that too. Yeah. Uh, let's hope that's where they go. Backstage, Jay, uh, Damian Priest is with J.D. McDonough, and he's scolding McDonough for kicking him in the face. Dom and Santos Escobar come in. Dom's he's, arm is in a sling. Yeah. Is he hurt? Um, is he hurt hurt for real? I don't think so. I mean, I didn't hear anything. He no. was wrestling last week on Raw, yeah. so he, uh, not on TV, for if you watched Hulu, but, <laughs> but <laughs> I saw him wrestle in the alternate universe. Uh, are we it. sure Dom is actually not Eddie Guerrero's son? <laughs> Every time I see him, he looks more like Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, they say, like, don't they say people and their dogs look alike? Yeah. yeah so yeah. maybe. Do I look like Rocky? <laughs> he is handsome as fuck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> talking about the dog. <laughs> well, by, by, by association. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, like, I don't know. Maybe if you're told something enough, you're like, you know, if if you will it, it will become. He's, I think he's got to be doing it on purpose. He's got the mustache and the mullet. Yeah. Like, he looks. Uh, These idiot fans were chanting "Shave the mustache" to no, Tom. I'm it. like, it's a great look. He's also a heel. Yeah, and he's a heel. He do. also had like Liv Morgan making eyes at him this yeah. week. So oh, keep the man. mustache, dude. <laughs> if, as if he wasn't going to be more likable by the <laughs> beta <laughs> males on Twitter. Gee, he's got another uh, lady on the roster looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he said he can't wrestle tonight, and he asked Santos to return the favor from WrestleMania and take his place. And JD says, uh, "I'm sorry." Damien Priest says, go out there and handle your business and stay out of mine. All right. Go out there, stay in your business <laughs> and out of mine. We're live, pal. <laughs> <laughs> like, and you're in a backstage segment, yeah. especially. You don't have to do the, like, read it like it's on the script where there's a big pause between stances and stuff. Yeah. Just talk like a person. <laughs> yeah. Well, he didn't know his motivation. That's yeah. why. Uh, in ring, we did uh, not need anyone to know their motivation because they know their characters inside and out. We had Imperium come down Imperium. to the ring. Gun- love, love Gunther. Sorry, Gunta guys. gets in the ring. Um, he's it's not fair that he's as good a talker as he is, too. Nope. <laughs> no, he, he is a he's a five tool player yeah, he for is. sure. Um, Gunther is flanked by. Giovanni Vici and what was his name? Kaiser Wilhelm. What's the other guy? Uh, uh, I only wrote Vinci because I said Vinci's in trouble after this. <laughs> uh, Ludwig Kaiser. Ludwig Kaiser. Ludwig Kaiser. Uh, flanked by both of them. Gunther says he's not here to take shots at Sami Zayn. He went away for a little while. It took him, took him some time to digest everything. I don't know if this was just a happy accident. He was champion for 666 yeah, days. Yeah, when he said that, I'm like, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. can't be intentional. <laughs> like, it's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I elevated the IC title to heights it has never seen before and became the greatest champion in its illustrious history. Truth, brother. Truth. Preach. Preach. <laughs> Had a lot of pressure on him, and now it's gone. He says to Sami Zayn, thank you for that, because now I'm not a target. I've gone from being the hunted to the hunter. It's playing off of what Cody said. Yeah. Yeah, which is a nice juxtaposition. Mm-hmm. I will make sure my name will be embedded into this new era, and he's officially declaring his participation in the King of the Ring tournament. I, uh, I have to now because we have a show, yeah, and they're doing things of consequence. I have to watch a Saudi. I've never watched a show, Saudi show before. I never wanted to contribute to that. The, the King of the Ring, the Blood Money, Saudi, yeah. any Saudi shows. Yeah, now I got to watch one. Well, you can just. I, can, I mean, I, I already have peacocks. I'm not giving them any extra money. Yeah. I just didn't like watching them. Yeah. Uh, also, too, you can't open up your phone the, when there's international shows because it's all spoiled. Oh, it just already. tells you everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. He says once he uh, wins a King of the Ring tournament, it's then up to him to decide which title he goes after, the Intercontinental or any other ones. But fair warning, as a champion, you will be targeted. And hunted by someone who can hold on to a title longer than anyone else. I like that. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Did they announce here that King of the Ring has a another like stipulation or added bonus for I, winning? I didn't get that from any any of this. They somebody somewhere said that your title shot because uh, yeah. I saw a lot of people like praising, but I didn't hear it on the show anywhere. Well, I just saw a lot of people said, talking about it. So you can go after any title you want. If you win the King of the Ring? I, like it's, this is just from the discourse, but yeah. it was a lot of people. So I'm like, they must have said it somewhere. Right? Yeah. But I didn't. I watched the whole show. I didn't hear it. Uh, let's see if there's any stipulations. Da, 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 da. Oh, no. That's really good if they're doing that. They should have always had that. Yeah. It should have been a, t- a title shot at SummerSlam always, <laughs> obviously. For some reason, it's bringing up 
um, King of the Ring 2000. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, why. okay. Yeah, which I, I don't hate that one. He says he's already the uh, Ring General. Oh, I'm sorry, he's already the General of the Ring. Soon he'll be the King of the Ring. And then, it's a new day. Yes, it is. And I'm like, okay. I, I groaned at they this. They were great here, though. They made a lot of sense to be yeah. here. And they so, were just very entertaining, too. I mean, they're yeah. usually entertaining, but this was particularly entertaining. Yeah. Uh, Xavier Woods is doing most of the talk, and he says it's a new era, and what better way to usher in a new era than with the new day? And what better way to usher in the new era than with the reigning, defending, <laughs> king of the ring, Xavier Woods. <laughs> I'm going uh, to do the big A. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. for our video uh, <laughs> participants. Yeah, we, no video right now for this one, so it's just for your benefit, well, Dave. I, <laughs> there's also no number on the screen to call. But, uh, and uh, Xavier Woods says, that makes Gunther a... Oh, because uh, Xavier Woods is the current king of the ring, and he's and Gunther is declaring his participation in the tournament. Xavier Woods says, Gunther is a usurper, a pretender to his throne. <laughs> I like that verbiage there. Xavier Woods is going to be the second ever two-time king of the ring uh, behind Bret Hart. Yeah. Um, Did they say Bret Hart? No, they just said. <laughs> they I had to go Google it. But uh, New Day gets a uh, where your gold at chant, which I thought was funny. <laughs> Where you going at? <laughs> they also said that you lost your t- title to Sam Zayn, <laughs> which I was like, I love you, New Day. Sam Zayn. Because you lost your belt to Sam Zayn. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Wrote a song about it like a hit. <laughs> uh, Gunther uh, Six, uh, his his tag team lackeys on the New Day. What? Wait, what? There was another part to the promo I like, too. Uh, there was something that... Um, Kofi kept repeating, tell him two times. Tell him three times so he knows. <laughs> and it was like Damn it, making me it. very, very happy. I, I forget it. what it was, but it was great. <laughs> I think at this point, the uh, oven-baked lasagna I was making was nearing its ending. I was just being wafted away with, did, l- with lack of detail. They did they announce what the match was going to be? New Day versus Here. Imperium? And, and, and then Kofi or Xavier said exactly what my brain said. Oh, yes. Oh, we well, no, we've seen each other so many times already. Yeah. And I was like, no shit, Kofi. Yeah. Or Xavier, I think it was. Uh, how about we don't see this match again for right. the billionth goddamn time? <laughs> like in the last three months. Well, we saw it again, yeah. and it went for nine minutes and 26 seconds. <laughs> uh, the New Day won. Um, and for the reason that we've seen it a hundred times, I only know that the New Day won. Yeah. Gunther's at commentary, and when they uh, when Imperium loses, he's furious, throws his chair, he walks away, he goes like up the ramp, and then uh, two guys in Imperium are they're hugging, they're having a nice moment. Giovanni Vici ate the pin again. He eats all the pins in this in this uh, tag team, and uh, Ludwig Kaiser attacks him, thereby seemingly dismantling Imperium. I'm worried for Vinci's prospect, future prospects in the company. <laughs> <You> think so? <laughs> oh, maybe he'll be uh, under the learning tree in three months. <laughs> but uh, so while this is all going on, Gunther has walked back uh, to the backstage. Kaiser also walks back. The camera follows him, and we see that Gunther's waiting for him in the gorilla position. And Kaiser says to Gunther, I told you that I'd get it done. And Gunther starts smiling really big. So this was all coordinated. I'm a little worried that this is going to lead to uh, Ilya Dragunov being put in this group because he happens to be Eastern European. Yeah. And I don't, he's a star. He is a individual. Yeah. What's great about him is that he's like a big, bright, shining on his own star. Right. He does the thing when he's coming out, then it's awesome. And everything about him is screams like this guy needs to be on his own. And I'm just worried they just debuted him. And then they got rid of one of the guys in their Eastern European faction, <laughs> and it's WWE. So they're like, oh, Eastern European guy? Go with the Eastern European guys. That's all. Prob- <laughs> probably. Like, I, I mean, really hope that's not going to happen. because I he did just think drop- Ilya Dragunov could be like a, a main event yeah. star. Well, I mean, we were just praising Tommaso Ciampa for being a vicious heel, and now yeah. he's cosplaying as exactly. Triple H. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um they do a quick WWE speed promo. I know we talked about this like once or twice, but apparently it's on Wednesdays at 12 a.m. Um, Eastern Have time. Have you seen any? Not a single stuff. one. It should just be called uh, WWE Short because it's not that fast. Th- th- three, it's just short matches. Three-minute matches. <laughs> yeah, just, just it's not, not, not super fast, Ugh. though. <laughs> Have you watched them? Uh, I saw clips. Uh, not great. So... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> not great. Well, let's move along. Uh, speaking of not great is how they're handling Andrade, but they do give him a package here. Uh, and he says, he's many things, but he's nobody's fool. Nobody's fool. Who's that? Cinderella, maybe? Uh, he betrayed the Judgment Day. I think so. And then <laughs> uh, he says, uh, Judgment Day didn't want a business partner. They wanted a servant. And nobody tells him what to do. And now he's their biggest problem. Cool. He is just dying for his wife to come back yeah, and throw a weight around. Because uh, he's doing did nothing. Did they say what's happening in this? Who, like what What he's got coming up on this show in his little thing I, here? If they did. I think they did. I because my note was the Hulu viewers must be pretty confused right now. Because <laughs> he's teaming with Ricochet for seemingly no reason. Yeah. If you didn't. Oh, if you no, watched they, Hulu and didn't get to see that yeah, match. Yeah, no, they, they probably mentioned <laughs> that. But again, I think I was spooning down lasagna at this point. <laughs> uh, in ring... And I went to go get lasagna because I, I paused it here because it was coming. Drew McIntyre <laughs> yeah. was coming in the ring. So we had another, we had an in-ring segment. Drew McIntyre comes out right away. CM Punk chants start and uh, Drew McIntyre sits. I was chanting CM Punk because for the second week in a row, I'm going to ask, where was CM Punk? Yeah. <laughs> Put him on my TV. He's saving him for the draft, man. He can t- make my weekly viewing better. You're preaching to the WWE, choir. WWE, uh, Triple H, God King that you yeah. are. Like, why don't you put your best guy in the TV, yeah. please? He's, a, he's not. He's, Even like he's he's healthy again. Tony Khan, who like uh, had problems with Punk and also has problems with like keeping people on TV when you need him, knew that it was a good idea. <laughs> but he's healthy. He put his ass on TV all the time. Even when he doesn't work with the company, put him yeah, on TV. Yeah, <laughs> it pops a rating. Uh, Drew McIntyre sits uh, crisscross applesauce and he goes as usual. Don't shoot up my kilt, you perv. <laughs> Uh, and then they're still chanting CM Punk. Why do you insist on chanting his name? So that man actually hates all of you. The only person he hates more than the fans is himself. You ever love something so much it doesn't quite love you back as much? And he said, that's my relationship with professional wrestling. <laughs> and then the crowd's chanting, what's between all these? And he goes, say what if you French kiss your cousins? <laughs> and the crowd goes, what? And he goes, you're sick. <laughs> uh, you don't understand complex relationships because the I... most complex relationship most of you in here I've ever had is with your right hand. <laughs> I right. hate the fucking one chance so much. Yeah. I hate it. It's, it's ruined so many things. I love when people do something clever with it like this, yeah. though. Uh, he's great. He's, uh, continues to be great yeah. on the mic. Yeah, he's doing, he's doing the best work of his career uh, continually. Um, after he says the right hand comment, Mac, Pat McAfee goes, I think we're I think there's some South Paws in the room. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. McAfee got on my nerves this show, mostly because I think he's playing up now his stupid Pittsburgh accents. It is so over the top. It sounds like Dave wants that talking. <laughs> it <laughs> wow. makes me, uh, I can't stand back McAfee. Who had at this Dave wants it on their bingo card? Well, we are, we've mentioned we are Chicago land uh, based, right. and he is on the score every week. He's yeah. like one of their main guys they talk to. So I hear him quite a bit. That's and fair. it's the most ridiculous over the top Pittsburgh accent yeah. until Pat McAfee. Yeah. And while we're at it, 773 <laughs> He recounts, he being uh, Drew McIntyre, recounts his attack at, and loss at WrestleMania. Yeah, brought up a, kind of a good point. He said, I didn't get my rematch like everybody else. I had to compete in a fatal four-way. I got screwed by Punk again, but I'm not going to complain. <laughs> he <laughs> always, that's his whole thing. It's you funny. <laughs> uh, and then he says, his next prize is the king of the ring. And he doesn't, he's like, I don't give a damn about the draft. And he's clearly like about to rant more. And then uh, Fat Seamus Shameful comes out. thing. Lobster. He's less fat already. He's less fat. He's already less fat. And he Not put, any better in the ring, I He don't put think, his old underoos on. <laughs> yeah. He looked like when Mr. Incredible got back into the game. Like <laughs> yeah. his old gear. Um, so Seamus comes out, and he's all smiley. Uh, and he says all he sees, he's talking, Seamus is talking to Drew McIntyre now, he says all he sees is someone who won't take responsibility for his mistakes, which makes him a coward. And he asks Drew to stand up because Drew is still Chris still, Cross Applesauce. Still, yeah, still Chris Cross Applesauce. Uh, he's known Drew for 20 years, and the last four years, he's only heard Drew bitch about how he's robbed about a, uh, out of his moment at WrestleMania during the pandemic era because nobody was there to see him. I was like, I watched you guys title. work out on YouTube. You weren't talking about that at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then he says uh, this year at WrestleMania, he did it. He won the world title, and his family was there. And then he blew it <laughs> over some stupid social media spat. He should be champion now, but over a meme and a T-shirt, he threw it all away. Seamus is uh, 
Connecting some dots yeah, that we're is. all thinking. <laughs> Seamus says we've had banger after banger after banger after banger. He went too 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 many bangers here. Yeah, <laughs> just banger after banger is all you got to do. In a room or a ring full of European guys, I am surprised nobody said mash. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it I'm seemed, sure they were biting their tongues. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he says, "Ask his friend. He's here to tell him the hard truth. A one-armed CM Punk kicked your arse." I had to rewind this so many times and then eventually put on closed captioning to understand what the hell he said. <laughs> I, I'm like, a one mom baba? I couldn't figure out the first word out of his mouth. But a one arm CM Punk. It was a little arms. garble mouth. Yeah. It was, especially you got Drew on the other side. like, Which is fine. He has a thick accent. But yeah. like, you know. It, like, I mean, his thick accent and his mic is decent, but it's not the best. The no. Like, uh, so then he challenges, he challenges Drew basically about him obsessing over CM Punk. And then Drew's like, you want to do this in public? <laughs> All right. Bef- I bet. <laughs> Before, go ahead. I was going to say, I bet, I bet afterwards uh, his thought was, I didn't want to do that in public. <laughs> 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 Shit. <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. Uh, he says, uh, Drew McIntyre says, before you were injured, it was banger after banger <laughs> after banger. But now since you've returned, it looks like it's been burger after burger after <laughs> burger. And Seamus is loving it. He's he, cracking yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> Seamus's reaction made me think, he's in a good place right yeah. now mentally. Like, but also, too, like he's going to be back in Adonis form in he, no time. His abs were visible already <laughs> on this show. So, like... I, I'm still concerned about the Zane ring ever getting I, back to where it was. I think it'll be, again, cautiously optimistic. Uh, but like his uh, appearance is already like I'm not, sure by today it's he put his he perfect. put his old underoos back on. <laughs> um, he was not wearing the official WWE Sheamus boxer shorts. Um, I googled the sh- the shop to see if they were selling those. I was just yeah. like, they gotta be selling these. No, that's just <laughs> one, oh. one and done. <laughs> I'm like, oh, they're selling in ring gear underoos. That would make sense. Uh, so many people would buy those. And then so many people would ruin. <laughs> they buy Woo Energy, Dave. <laughs> no, of course they'll buy Seamus Underoos. Can you imagine the amount it's... of like times intimacy had to be halted because somebody gets naked and they're like in their CM Punk Underoos. <laughs> <laughs> Look in my eyes. And the wife's like, All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to bed now. I, I'm, I, at least... The female in that situation probably would just be like, oh, it's just the Chicago flag. That's kind of weird, but okay, <laughs> on your underpants. Why do you have uh, elbow pads on? <laughs> yeah. Why are you taping up your fists? <laughs> We're going to make love. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, you don't understand me, woman. Yeah. This is my passion. <laughs> I'm passionate about wrestling. You need to get a job, Cliff. <laughs> How are you affording those? I'll be in the basement. Uh, gonna I gotta sew some new underoos together. <laughs> oh, and then, and then their lives are ruined when they do a gimmick change. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why is Daddy a devil worshiper now? Oh man. <laughs> um. So anyway, uh, <laughs> Seamus goes. Uh, you know, one thing I've noticed since I've been gone is you're getting really good at these one-liners. <laughs> And Seamus goes, I can lose the weight. You can't lose stupid. So stop blaming everybody else for uh, for for the mistakes. Drew says. Burger after burger, the, pil- the ginger Pillsbury Doughboy, Flubberman. That's what all the guys in the back were saying during your match is last Flubberman week. Flubberman something? Is that a play on something? I'm, I I couldn't figure that one I out. I only thought of Flubber, the movie, yeah. the Robin Williams movie. But like, that wasn't even fat. That was a piece I, of gack. And it also wouldn't, it, I, like, the ginger thing, I, it's a Seamus thing. Yeah. And the burger after Off burger, it's a Seamus thing. Like, what? I think there must be something that I'm just missing. The I think Flubberman. He, I think everything sounds better in lists of three, and yeah. he didn't have anything else <laughs> yeah. to say. So he's like, the Flubberman. <laughs> it, uh, it did remind me of Rubber Band Man by the Spinners. Oh, yeah. And that song is fucking sad. Hammer down, It's a good uh, boxing workout <laughs> song on uh, yeah. VR boxing yeah. workout, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he says he was defending Seamus backstage. Seamus doesn't care what they say. Drew does because he's because uh, he's your friend and he tells you the truth every single week, and uh, he's Seamus's only friend here. And he says uh, his friendship with Seamus isn't worthwhile, but he's here for him. So go ringside and watch your back. Cool. Yeah, it was cool. cool delivery. And once they started the back and forth, Seamus Shame, got way better here too. Yeah, his he's much better at the back and forth than he is doing just the WWE promo that did, 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 did stuff. When they started talking, and he was like, "I don't care what they say in the back." It felt very real and yeah. believable. Like I was, he doesn't care. No. Like I believe that Seamus. Also, good job. That makes Drew look more desperate as a heel. Yes, he's absolutely. To... And his friend clearly does not care, and no. he should be happy for his friend yeah. that doesn't give a shit yeah. what people say about him. Yeah, there was a lot of real subtle, good. Perhaps not completely intentional character building. Yeah. In, in yeah. This. So 
Uh, but we got to see Sheamus versus Shinsuke Nakamura. It was 11 minutes, 21 seconds. They did say it was Sheamus' 1,901st match. It's a lot of stiff-ass matches. It's a lot of matches. For an older guy. Uh, my other... He was better. I will give him. He was better here than in the prior week. But, I mean, he had an easier opponent to be good sure. with. But he still was not even close to no. where he you know, was that, before he got hurt. Now that you mention that, I don't know if, because my note here was Nakamura clearly doesn't care anymore. Maybe he just slowed down. To, to yeah, he did as a crutch. Even but even Nakamura working. This was definitely like one. Of, you know, I was talking about the two Nakamuras that exist. Yeah. Like the when he gives a shit, it still can be amazing. Yeah. But most of the time, he's like, I'm here for a paycheck, yeah. and I know that I can get by on my dance thing, and then just whatever matches. This is a whatever match, but a whatever Nakamura match is still a better dance partner for Sheamus than not Otis was last week. A thousand percent. Uh, so like he looked better than he did, but um, it, yeah, he's still. He's a ways away from where he, because he was like crushing it every time he was on TV before he got hurt. Ring rust thing. Um, it, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm more better hopeful opponents. after he uh, like shed a lot of the weight immediately yeah. that like maybe just got to give him a little bit more time. Yeah. Uh, I just, I don't know. He broke kick win. Good just match. It was just like, a, again, it was, yeah, it was change that name. It was a, uh, <laughs> but it was decent. It was a good, yeah, it was a good match. Yeah. Um, I've seen this match from Sheamus a couple times, Lots a couple times. dozen yeah. times. Yeah. But uh, he has good matches, so it was it was fun to watch. But I mean, I started writing notes about moves. I'm like, oh yeah, this is it's the it, same thing. It's a pay by number. <laughs> like, Nakamura has been on every t- television show that WWE's produced yeah. for the last like and 12 he, years. And he has lost. <laughs> Sheamus has a very healthy outlook here. I'm happy for him. <laughs> um, uh, they did for this match do again, Dave. Wow. Fucking entrance, wow. commercial, yeah. video filler, yeah. after commercial, oh, while really? there's guys in the ring, Jesus. then back to the match where I was like, oh, did I fast? No, no, I didn't. I didn't miss anything. Yeah. It's their stupid layout again. Why? they? Yeah, they did. A, uh, went to did the, the Nakamura's entrance, then went to commercial break. They came back. When they came back, it was just a bunch of like a, a filler like stuff <laughs> about the women like they were going woman to woman for the uh, the main oh, the battle royal yeah it was yeah, coming yeah. up but no, no point to it they were just like here's katana cross or whatever her name is <laughs> uh, that tag team that is useless katana chance katana chance and caden cross caden cross so i was right katana cross. it doesn't matter what their names are nope. um it was like showing them stretching yeah. i'm like why are we th- i thought nakamura was in the ring now yeah. what's going on he stretches in the ring show him stretching. yeah, yeah. He's so then we stretch. get back to them and i'm like what were they doing that whole time i've been trying like hell for a while to do that thing where he lays where he sits on the, his like knees the big one the, where he no, drops back no <laughs> we can do that right now <laughs> we could actually have a chance we need a we need a judge to see who could do it better but i think uh you and i could have a lot of fun with that, where he's sitting on Rocky his, can judge us. He's sitting on his feet. Rocky he judges judge, us every week. every fucking week. <laughs> getting a lot of side eye from this dog. But where he sits on his feet and he leans all the way back, like yeah, that's yeah. part of my stretching now, and it's fucking hard to do. I respect the shit out of yeah, it. Of course, it's hard. <laughs> like I feel like every ligament's gonna snap in my knees. Um. So after this match, good match, like you said, Seamus match. Yeah. Um, a big improvement from last week. Yeah. Backstage, we have Kathy Kelly with Sami Zayn. Um. Sami Zayn wants to address uh, what happened to him last week with Chad Gable, but he hears Chad Gable is going to address it in the ring tonight. So he's just going to be patient and wait. And then uh, Bronson Reed gets in Sami Zayn's face. And uh, Sami Zayn basically says, anytime, any place. And Sami Zayn turns his back and Bronson Reed attacks him from behind. We're getting a Bronson Reed, Sami Zayn intercontinental title program. My no note was not Otis, ain't it? No. <laughs> like he just, it's, mm-hmm. No. Mm. Nope. <laughs> He's got like Iron Man villain vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of. <laughs> <You know? yeah. laughs> uh, I just don't want to see him anymore. No. And, like, Especially when we got actual Otis back this week. <laughs> like, Also, too, like, can't we just have more Chad Gable and Sami Zayn? Yeah. I'd prefer that. thought that's what they were doing. Yeah. Well, here we are. Speaking of Chad Gable, <laughs> uh, it's an in-ring uh, like all this, with though. all of Alpha Academy. Did Chad Gable always have the NFL on Fox theme? That's his song. I oh, never recognized it until this week. I was like, Perhaps. Dur, 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 dur. I'm like, why is NFL on Fox? Oh, it's Chad Gable. <laughs> it's just that song. The yeah. first like six notes are like lifted directly from the song. Well, I have to pay attention. <laughs> you know. Chad Gable's in a suit. The rest of them, uh, Akira Tozawa, Maxine Dupree, and actual Otis are in their 
uh, Alpha Academy ring gear. Uh, all uh, sad. <laughs> Otis, Otis's shirt said like junior cadet or something like that. It made me laugh out loud. Uh, yeah, they do not look thrilled. Chad Gable, um, he said he's had a rough couple of weeks, at least what he did. Did we mention he's besuited? I did, did oh, I you did. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. I, mean I missed it. Besuited? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Stealing that. Yeah, he said at least what I did to Sammy was justified. Chad Gable could handle Sami Zayn winning. He said that wasn't good enough for Sami Zayn. So he saw Sami Zayn. Or Sami Zayn saw Chad Gable weeping in the corner after the match was over, and Sami Zayn went over to him and he put the title right in his face. Yeah. This is um, this promo was a really good example of how to spin something. Oh yeah, in your favor. But, I love all this way more than Shush yeah. and all that nonsense. He was intimidating as hell. Yeah, here. this was this was very good. Uh, yeah, so um, so he put the title right in his face, kind of rubbing in his face. That was he was implying. Chad Gable used class. He raised Sami Zayn's hand, but that wasn't good enough. Because then Sami Zayn and went out of the ring and celebrated with his wife, right when Chad Gable was watching, and he said that was that should have been my moment. That should have been him at WrestleMania. That should have been him celebrating with his daughter in the front row. But I instead, got a little concerned when he said that, that they were going to go back. To, but it was just a good line. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if anything, it was a way to put a bow on yeah, all the like daughtership. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but instead of all that, he was wasting his time training Sami Zayn. I've been wasting my time training a bunch of freaking losers. <laughs> <laughs> I cook, like, baby, cook. I love that he's not, like, firing him either. He's just going to be a prick bully. Yeah, like absolutely. an evil, like the meanest gym coach you ever had. <laughs> like. <laughs> He gets into Zawa's face. He says, all you do is come out and do your dance and rack up loss after loss. <laughs> Goes to Maxine. Sweet Maxine. Pretty as a princess, but dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> it hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I've given leave you her every- alone. Yeah. <laughs> Jerk. I've given you everything and got nothing in return. Uh, I mean, all he's, he's doing masterful heel work hmm. and then everybody's acting exactly how they need yeah. to. Uh, and then he goes to Otis and he said, don't, don't even get me started on you. <laughs> Otis, my prized pupil, my number one guy. You have proven yourself beyond a shadow of a doubt to be the biggest disappointment of them all. Sad, Otis. Man. And he's good at sad. Yeah. He's really good. He's good at most of the stuff he does. Yeah. Otis is a very is gifted he, performer. I think he's bone on bone on his knees. Uh, I was oh, watching. Was that? I was watching. Uh, I mean, you can't really have that frame no. for very long. No. Well, he was an Olympic power lifter. Power lifter, I think, yeah. So Chad Gable and... Otis did one of the Celtic Warrior workout videos, and Chad Gable's like just doing all the stuff. Yeah, and there's parts where Otis is like, "I can't do that. I, my body doesn't work either. Yeah. I'm bone on bone, something like that." Back in the ring, Chad Gable says, uh, "But this is why you signed up for to the academy for feedback." <laughs> <laughs> Again, Get, he's like, "Yeah, it is technically true." You know, yeah. <laughs> Get on the same page and know from now on we're going to focus on Gable. We're going to win. <laughs> my IC title together and you're going to help me no matter what, right? I want to hear you say it together <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> Bulliest ass thing you could do. And like they're kind of sheepishly saying mm-hmm. it. They all kind of like say, I think the camera didn't catch Tozawa and it might have caught Maxine, but you see Otis, Otis say, yeah, clearly. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, matter what, he no gets in what. Otis's face, he says, <laughs> and Otis says, no matter what. And Gable drops the mic and he leaves. Yeah. Awesome. It's great. Awesome. Yep. Uh, I Awesome storytelling. To build this up because it gives Chad Gable something to do to become an even heel heel heel. And then like, Yeah, this was the full ass yeah. heel stuff. It was, but then it not just it, that he snapped and got no, angry no, or whatever. No. This was like was I'm a prick now. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, it made and me feel like, bad for everybody in the ring with him. And that's what a good heel like you're something I can relate to. Yeah. Something epathetic, right? He's great. And then keep him away from the IC title. And then when he eventually does go fight Sammy. Like win or loss, it's I do. I think that's a mistake, though. I would have that happen right now. Like, why are we? Why are we getting distance? They're healing him up from that because he just that was enough. He's but, a heel now, but he just have lost. Clean. Like, he just lost clean. So yeah. now, like, they're but gonna. It's, it doesn't matter. You can do a rematch immediately. Nobody sure. gives a shit. So, but like, I don't know if they're gonna do character work. I'm okay with a little bit. Yeah, character work. I, I love this. Yeah. I just, uh, I don't, I don't want the distance. I don't want to waste time with Sammy with in a program I have no interest in because yeah. I'm going to have to watch that. <laughs> like I'm going to be like, uh, we're getting a lot of those right now yeah. across, uh, across WWE programming backstage. We have Ricochet and Dominic Mysterio. Ricochet's bum Dom's not cleared to wrestle. And then he promotes his speed match with JD McDonough, which you have convinced me I will never have to watch. <laughs> Ricochet walks out and, uh, Dominic Mysterio is standing there and Liv Morgan walks into frame, giving him 
Doe eyes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, I. She's lovely. Also, she is like in a beef mommy now. Yeah, she which, is. <laughs> I love that. I love this pairing. Yes. Like, it's great. She had to say nothing, and yeah. we got the entire program they, right like, away. Right? Legit chemistry. Those two. Yeah. <laughs> like on screen. Yeah. Um, Sammy, I'm sorry, uh, Dominic Mysterio's wife has to be the most understanding human being walking the planet. <laughs> yeah. Because he just works with two dimes that like, are like obsessing over him. Yeah. So good for her. Uh, Ricochet and Andrade were next, uh, and they were facing JD McDonough and Santos Escobar. This took 11 minutes and 56 seconds. Was the people on the wrong sides? Because uh, Santos and Ricochet were dressed in identical yeah, tag I that too, yeah. <laughs> gear. They did not consult each other. Maybe pack two pairs of pants in that to-go bag. <laughs> this match had no heat at they, all. You know what happened here? And it was like, I noticed it at the beginning of the match, and then it continued all the way through. Like, uh, Andrade forgot he was in WWE. He was try- <laughs> like, and it screwed everybody else up, too, because he was working he at a pace that you would work in, uh, not... Just one promotion. Anywhere outside of WWE, you're working right. at that pace. So, like, everybody was, like, accidentally, you know, uh, uh, deadweighting him and stuff because he was, like, moving from one thing to the next way yeah. faster <clears throat> than you do in WWE. And people were not, like, it was messing up all of their rhythm on everything. Yeah. He did a couple of dragon screws, and Santos was like, why are we going so fast? Like, <laughs> it, it, he fell weird for the second one. Like, there was a couple of missed spots, and it was all just because Andrade was, like, working like he, he was fast. indie or whatever like uh i don't hate that for him because he is vanilla as shit everybody else like i want him always to yeah. work i just like that style way better but like I, everybody's got to be on board with it right. and doing it together because it messed the chemistry of this matchup terribly I, because he was flying around doing yeah. stuff and nobody was prepared for it and it was like not in a good way it was like they weren't ready to meet hit their spots and stuff well let's see next week how he course corrects because that's either on purpose yeah. or it was something he tried or i mean he he does have a history of occasionally going into business for himself a little bit um but i want like that pace it'd be great i would yeah. love to have that andrade in the wwe right. um but it, it, again, it's got to be something that they discuss beforehand yeah, because it, it like threw a monkey wrench into this whole match. Yeah, um, that's maybe why I didn't enjoy most of it. it I mean, like, it was I, disjointed. It was just not. It, didn't it was not feel, a very good match. Especially, I think it's especially like problematic when you have Ricochet in there and Santos, and you're like, I know these guys are good. Exactly, and, and, but it was like they were not on the same page, no, so no. it was throwing them off too. No. It also just it, it, it bums me out every time I yeah. see Ricochet because I'm like, ah, I know what you can do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just haven't seen it for a decade. He was really hard to place in the like in my draft order. I have like yeah. a, my order set, but uh, I'm like, what the fuck do I do? With this? There was a couple of guys where I'm just like, all right, am I booking a company or am I playing favorites here? I keep going back and it's forth. A, I mean, I only gave it a cursory glance. I'll, 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 I'll dig in more as we draft, yeah. but. My thought was like, am I booking WWE or am I booking the company that I would book? Yeah. <laughs> because it's two different things. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I said, match at zero heat. Very cool spot where Santos Escobar did a top row Perican Rana to Ricochet. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. And Ricochet lands. So JD McDonough's laying in the ring and Ricochet flips. So he's been Hurricane rana from the top rope. And he, the way he flips is he just. Does a Harlem hangover? Yeah, he just onto drops his, uh, a leg his drop. Yeah, onto. Uh, but because Katie Santos McDonough. and Ricochet are dressed the same, it made it look like they're the tag team doing that as a finisher, which yeah. would be a cool finisher. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, That's they should head. just be a tag team. Like they cool already have the gear, the just let them do that, and they could that could be their move. That should have been Hulk. If Hulk Hogan was a luchador, that would have been his. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then the message on uh, JD McDonough for the W. Damian Priest comes out, cleans house. Uh, he gets in Dom's face. And he speaks in Spanish. Um, it's the first back elbow that didn't look great because it was like, he was going way too fast. Yeah. And uh, once his Santos was not prepared, yeah. I'm so going to have to like, go back and watch this Missed again. him pretty yeah. badly. <laughs> so seems like it was problematic. But uh, Damian Priest says he doesn't need anybody. They, meaning Dom and JD, need yeah. him. So he's distancing himself. From the Judgment Day, whoop de doo Zoe Stark got a hype promo. I'm happy there. I mean, I want. I asked for the breakup of the Judgment Day yeah. after, and it looks like that's what they're doing. So yeah. I'll give it a thumbs up. The, I mean, no, none of them are going to do anything afterwards, which is why I'm kind of bummed about it. Because like they don't give Finn something. They just gave him a big contract. 
who? The whole group? Finn, look at Finn something. Oh, Finn I'm not worried about, but like the three and guys. Dom is a heat magnet. He's he's fine. He's going to be yeah, fine. But like on his own? Yeah, I yeah, think so. You think so? He can, dude, yeah. He's got, like, he doesn't technically do anything great, yeah. except he's got a ton of the right kind of charisma, and like he has a connection with the fans. That's all you really need right. in the WWE is that connection. He's got it, and he That's does fair. get people to react like he wants them to. That's fair. He's going to be fine. Like uh, Damian Priest. I like him. I want him. A waste of space. <laughs> so, But I'm not worried about what he is going to have because I don't want to watch him on TV. So, no. like, he should cut promos like they, like, you know, those suits with all the, it can sense how you're moving. And then, like, there's a character on the screen because he just yeah. sounds like. I don't know, like a Final Fantasy character to me when he talks. Like he should just cut promos. I like, said, I said, video game character too. Yeah, I said he talks like a video game character. And just like, have that character like move its mouth. Yeah, like you know, he what should I mean? cut promos on uh, TNA. Yeah, <laughs> shoot his blank arrow at that <laughs> six ring of honor ring. that I don't watch. Um, put him on Ring of Honor. Uh, Zoe Stark got a hype promo next for reasons. Backstage we have Jackie Redman. Can uh, like, but oh, by oh, the way, oh, 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 oh. what what was this Zoe Stark thing? I like, I thought at the end they were going to be like, and that's why I'm going after such and such. It was a, and it was just like, and was, I'm going to keep it up. It was a really well Great, produced Zoe Stark. hype <laughs> promo video reminding us she exists. She won some matches at some point in 2023 or and whatever. Like played into <laughs> this whole episode, not at all. <laughs> it was again, it was a pacing thing. I'm yes. like, why am I watching this? Yeah. What? Why? Why? Can't give. Uh, why do we have to fire camera grabs? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, backstage, Jackie Redmond's with Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. And they start talking about why do these two have to cheat to win? Oh, you know, the, you're challenging how we win our matches. Fine. Uh, they're verbally interrupted by a screaming Liv Morgan and Nia Jax are being pulled apart just to the right of the camera. Why are the heels like in a blood feud? Uh, Nia and Liv don't like each other. Yeah, but they're heels. Like, I... Because that you just turned that, live heel. That was pre WrestleMania. I know. Yeah. But you just turned live heel. But that's make her do bad stuff to a baby face. Rhea's not here right now, so there's other baby faces in the company. Well, one walks out, <laughs> and I think this who they pay no mind to. Yeah, and uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I did. And uh, uh, Becky Hogan walks into frame. <laughs> she asks for the mic. Starts walking to the ring. Uh, the man has come around. I hate that. I hate the man has come around. No one did. Either. It's not a it phrase. Mm. It's not a phrase. Uh, I, you know, I, never, I mean, it's the Johnny Cash song, but it's not the it's not the same exact I words never, either. So it's when walk, the man comes around. I'm going to start walking in here going, <laughs> hey, Sully, the Dave has come around. <laughs> and you're going, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, and also, plus, does anybody know? Besides, I'm an old man. That's why I know it's Johnny Cash song. Until like, you said that right now, I didn't <laughs> connect those dots. Also, she's not from Tennessee. Yeah, she's Irish. <laughs> uh, her hair says so. I, I'll give her credit. This the, what she does here is a difficult thing to do, and it's live. And walking she does and it, talking, it, like walking and talking with other elements too. Like she has a person that she has to. I don't like what she said because I'm like, it's your opponent. Yeah, uh, worry about yourself. Yeah. But like. Uh, just the physical act of what she's doing, the actual nuts and bolts, is a hard thing to do. To like well, walk, talk, on camera, yeah. live, doing stuff in a certain amount of time. Right. So I was like, that's impressive. I didn't like it, yeah. <laughs> like, but, uh, but it was still <laughs> like impressive. The, the content, that's so great. <laughs> uh, this was this episode, because now every episode of WWE has to have the uh, the, the Goodfellas yeah. uh, shot, where it's just one long, uncut shot. It's Becky taking the mic, walking and talking. Even if they're going to spam this, though, it's at least it's a good thing to spam rather than what they used to, yeah. which was sucky stuff. So this like it's cool. I know they were going to overuse it, and then we're going to be tired of it or whatever. I but it's know. still yeah. it's still cool. Like you, I'd actually, rather get tired of this than the other crap. This that actually they used involves to do. talent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? And for multiple people. Yeah. Uh, while she's doing her long walk, she stops to give Maxine Dupree advice. And my other comment was, "Fuck you, dude. Like, <laughs> what are you like? You're that's not basically what I said. You're too. not likable. Like that's uh, not a likable thing to do. No, it's like what Chad Gable would do because he's oblivious, or what Chris Jericho yes. would do because he's on the other channel being keep your oblivious, chin up, oblivious. rookie. Shut up. Also." You got a match. Go worry about that. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then we had the women's battle royal. That like that, that, again, I'm not to harp on it, but that puts under your all your opponents too. If yeah. you're if you're walking out and you're showing everybody that you care so little about the thing you're about to go do for the world title, yeah, like that you have time to just go say keep your chin up, kid, or whatever to somebody that not connected to you whatsoever. It really makes it feel like 
lesser than the match. It makes the match not feel like a big deal because you're not acting like it's a big deal. 100%. <laughs> um, I was trying to find the contenders. Do we, we don't need to. Did we skip a Nia Jax promo? Did we? Yeah, I mean, I, I got a Nia Jax promo. Oh, let me hear it. Because I, Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't do word for word. I just... Uh, uh, Who strikes again? I said, <laughs> uh, Nia Jax sounds like Nicole Bass. <laughs> and, uh, and then... Because she, she does. She sounds exa- identical. To Nicole yeah. Bass, but, um, oh, I just lost it. Oh, no. I'm not, I got it. Never mind. Uh, it sounds like Nicole Bass. And she also says... Uh, I'm going to take out everybody in this match one by one by one. And I was like, why is one by one? Why are you emphasizing that? Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're going to, it's not more intimidating to take them out one by one. Yeah. It'd be more intimidating to say, I'm going to take them all out at once. Yeah. (laughs) To say, (laughs) taking them out one by one, you're just doing what you fucking do in Battle Royal. Two by two, we're marching toward two (laughs) doors. God loves Mormons and he wants some more. (laughs) Uh, take Nia Jax out of this match that we're about to talk about. Take her out. Yeah. Put in Bianca Belair. Same position. Yeah. Or Bianca's got to win then. Flipper. Yeah. Uh, Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler in this match. Flip. Oh, what, you mean what the tag, gets done? The, the tag team partner of the w- woman who got a hype video literally before the match started. Yeah. yeah. How dare you? Stick her w- exactly what Nia did in this match. Yeah. Give to Shayna and ha- give Nia what Shayna did. This match is ten times better immediately. Yeah, you're not wrong. She's not a strong person. She's portraying a powerhouse, and she is weak. She is physically weak. Yeah. She can't do moves. No, I noticed that when she was. <laughs> like, so I, I didn't. I heard who won before I watched, and I was disgusted, so I didn't watch the match. <laughs> uh, but I saw parts of the match. Nia Jax tried to like lift up Piper. Nevin in a fireman's carry, and yeah. you realize really quickly, like she is. There's not much strength. Fucks in up there. three fireman's carries. She screws up two Samoan drops. That's one of her signature moves, and she can't do the move because yeah. she's not strong enough. You're trying to tell me that she's a powerhouse. That's her whole, whole thing. Is she's supposed to be like overpowering everybody? You got her in there with Shayna Baszler, who is like very clearly much stronger than her. Right. It is it takes me completely out of everything you're doing. When you're trying to tell me that this woman who clearly struggles to do basic stuff is like stronger than all these other competitors that I'm seeing do super impressive, athletic, powerful. Really things. quickly, Shayna Baszler was in the match. Yeah, I'm saying take what the, oh, and like okay. Nia overpowered her and Roll like wise. threw her out. Of, see, what they did in the match, swap it because Nia was in the final three and was like, look like she was going to win for a long time. Yeah. Uh, put Shayna there. Just have Shayna do that. It's 10 times more believable. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find all the participants, but it's being... She did a Samoan drop thing where she bounced somebody off a ring post where she lost control of the person before she let go like, let go of them. And then they like ragdolled into the post and it looked like that was the one thing that looked like kind of impressive or painful was because it was super reckless. Like it was because she lost control because she's not strong enough to do the move. It was, it was glaring how... Uh... Maybe we don't make her the big powerhouse if yeah, she can't. Yeah, especially get... when you got Chayna Basil right next to her, yeah. who is like legitimately powerful. <laughs> yeah. get... um... did you, so you didn't? Did you get the finish of this? Of what do you mean the finish? Did you watch the finish of the match? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said you didn't watch the match. No, I I didn't watch the whole thing. Um, no, no, neither did I. <laughs> Fast forward through half of it. <laughs> to... I'm just trying to find who the fuck was in the match, and it's like really problematic. No one has a list for some reason. And the uh, the only ones that mattered are Nia, Liv, and Becky, because they were like the last third or half of the match was just those three anyway. Yeah, I, I just I want to. Oh wait, I think I got it. Bear with me, folks. Uh, women's World. No, no, I did not get it. All right, whatever. Um, yeah, I uh, I think. Unfortunately, the right move. Yeah, no, I think it's the right move. I like don't want her on TV anymore. Me neither, really, but people Go like away. her. I don't care. She if still is over. I don't care. This is the Brian Danielson argument. I don't care what everybody else likes. I want to like things the way I like them. That's my constant argument. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, people are like, oh, you need to be more blatant about your storytelling at AEW. Oh, you got can't have all these banger matches because you're giving not them what away. I sound no, like. That's what people say. And I say, 
I don't give a fuck what there's going to pop a rating. I give a fuck what I enjoy watching on TV. I said and it. what I enjoy watching on TV is what they are currently doing. You so can, keep doing it. You can hear <laughs> you can hear this full conversation on the AEW <laughs> edition of Blue Thunder Pod. Uh, every single one of them. Every single one of them. <laughs> but, uh, you can also hear how Sally's impression of me is not as good as his. <laughs> he doesn't have a gravelly British voice or... <laughs> Maybe if I my last name was Canyon. You're gravelly. Can... Who's better than Canyon? <laughs> You're saying it wrong. Why do you always say it wrong? Ah, uh, mm. yeah, Becky won. Becky's champ. I'm. Uh, I'm. But I do have. I get the notes about the finish of this stupid thing too. Ooh, hit I me. hate. The, I hate battle royals for championships. There was yeah. one good one ever, and we watched it, reviewed it. Uh, Turnbuckle Time Machine. Go check it out. Uh, Royal Rumble '92 was awesome. It's the only good one ever. Yeah. Uh, so the the big like. This big, like, extended spot they did for the finish of the match was both women were on the apron, and they were teasing who's going to get knocked off of the apron. Right. Liv was out, went over the top to get to the apron. She then pulled Becky through the middle ropes, and then they're going back and forth. It makes Liv look an idiot. Yeah. Because it didn't matter if she knocked Becky off, because she didn't go over the top. Correct. She knows she didn't go over the top, because she's the one that pulled her through the ropes. Right. But she's behaving like, if I knock her off, I'm going to win. Right. Makes her look stupid. I hated it so well, much. I'm really <laughs> glad I fast-forwarded all the... Because all I saw was the oblivion, and then the manhandle slam. Yeah. It was so uh, and dumb. And people out. are like, the announcers are calling it like, oh, which one of these women? She's trying to go, Becky's going for a German suplex. Off. And that bothered me too. Cole, Cole's like, Becky's going for a German. I'm like, don't call it a German, like you're hip, when you don't know the name of a single other suplex. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but like, Becky's going for a German. That's really risky for her. No, it's not, you stupid shit. If yeah. she does the German, she wins. Even if her feet touch the floor, because we all just watched her come through the middle rope. Why do these things not matter? They should matter. <laughs> Details matter. Yeah, that's not, like not even a small detail. No, that's, that's a big goddamn it's a detail. Massive storyline. Like, it was right. It wasn't like they didn't quite catch it on camera or anything either. It was like center frame pulls her through the middle ropes. Yeah, and all the dummies on commentary don't notice it, and then and uh, it didn't matter evidently because the the way they worked the whole end of the match was as if Becky was in peril Correct. somehow. Yeah, so stupid. Yeah, I mean. I do think it was the right call, putting the belt on her, though, because I, I think Liv is going to chase her and win, and it'll yeah. be a bigger deal. That Shouldn't was, be in a battle royal. That was the big um, gripe I saw in the IWC that Liv should have won. Yeah, they were wrong. They are very uh, wrong. <laughs> there were plenty of things to complain about. That wasn't the thing. No. <laughs> um, Surprised Zoe Stark didn't have much more of a... Hype, uh, yeah, after the high package. Didn't Natalia Absolutely get, like, unnecessary high package. Natalia was shown, shown stretching in the back. Like yeah. They kind of like singularly profiled a couple people. Yeah, that some of them zero. in the middle of other people's matches. They <laughs> went profiled. <laughs> but they had zero, zero play. <laughs> nothing. Nothing no. for the first... Anybody but those three. No. And Nia Jax then made it... You shine the light on her because there's only the final three. It looked like for a while she was going to win the fucking thing. Yeah. Uh, so we get to get the extra spotlight on all her like moves that she can't accomplish because she's not physically strong enough to do any of them. I think that's going to be the first challenger. Nia yeah, Jax. I do too. With Nia her Jax. promo, that was her promo. That was the point of the promo. I'm coming after the world title. Nia Jax. Super. Can you learn how to wrestle first before yeah. you do come after the world title? Mm-hmm. Maybe learn a couple basic moves no. so you don't hurt somebody. Absolutely not. You good? I hate <laughs> nepotism bullshit. And she's like the Rock's cousin or whatever. Yeah. The only reason she's there. Right. Only. There's just zero. It brings no, zero. she's the big, uh, she's un- big. unbeatable heel. You got to be strong, too, if you're going to be the no, big person. she's strong of heart and mind. <laughs> she's not, I don't know about either one of those. <laughs> not strong enough to learn how to do wrestling moves. It was glaring. Like basic ones. Like make Piper Nevin the big uh, the big bad. Yeah. She can actually Any work. of the other women that were no, in this no, match. No, but like if you want like a big like intimidating. She's super strong. She, and she's super good. Yeah, she's excellent in the ring, but yeah. also like just has the physical capability yeah. to do the Which beast we've seen thing. time and time again. Yeah. yeah. That was raw. Yeah, yeah so, it was. That was raw. <laughs> One thing that they announced on the show uh, that we kind of touched on a couple of times is the draft is back. The draft will start uh, tonight. If you're listening to this, the day we we drop the podcast, and um, on uh, so it's going to be over the course of tonight's SmackDown and Monday Night Raw this coming Monday. I like the way they're doing this. Yes, SmackDown's going to have four rounds with 16 total picks, and it has its own individual pool that you can pick from on Mon- on uh, Friday. So it's not just SmackDown people or just Raw people. Like they have just a dedicated small group of people that you could pick tonight on SmackDown on Raw. There will be six rounds, 24 total picks, and that will be another group of people. And the two groups do not overlap. So never did it this way before. Love it. 
Champions are protected on each brand, except the women's tag team champions. They are eligible. And they're also grouped together. <laughs> title doesn't matter. Because no, no, there's no one to fight them. Yeah. Um, they're they, great. I, yeah, they're I, should, great. I should clarify. They're, they're great. And they will it's be. the worst division in wrestling. It's tough. And it's about to be. Um, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill are about to be injected. In that. But the reason I'm, I'm assuming that they're available is because in the draft, it's not individual wrestlers. Like, they have grouped factions together. So I, I have think, a question for that, though, yeah, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bloodline, is it with Roman? Have, yeah, he's in the bloodline. So it's all. He's it's, tribal it's, chief. It's uh, Roman, Solo, uh-huh. Paul Heyman. Tamatanga. Tamatanga. Right. Jimmy Uso? Was he I th- kicked is out? It, is, he, is he officially kicked out? I don't know. They beat the crap out of him. Yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't see his name anywhere else. But uh, Maybe okay. they killed him. He wasn't on the show this week. <laughs> Might have killed him. Um, check your ravines for... <laughs> just start going around and go, Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> Yeah, we, like everybody's going to respond because as we discussed, <laughs> they just turned that into a regular right. word everybody uses now. I went to, that's like, uh, I remember going to a concert, uh, the Q101 Jamboree, which was an outdoor festival in Chicago for a local radio station, Q101. Back when they used to do music festivals. Yeah, though. and uh, the band Goldfinger was oh, playing nice. in the parking lot. I love Goldfinger. And they had, a sing, they had a song called Counting the Days. Yeah, they sure did. Where it's, uh, the lyric is, still counting the days. I've been without you one, two, three, four. <laughs> now, my friends and I were fairly certain we were going to get separated during this part of the show. So we agreed, hey, if we lose each other, when they do the one, two, three, four, just put your hand up and count with it. <laughs> you would not believe how my stomach dropped. When, when, every- okay, when we were going to find each other, when Jay Uso starts putting his hands up in the air, we'll just put our hands up in the air. We'll be able to see each other. My stomach dropped <laughs> with horror that everybody else's friend said, hey, if you get lost, <laughs> count to one, two, three. I was the dumbest kid. But uh, anyway, SmackDown picks first on Friday. Mm-hmm. Raw picks first on Monday. And then the rosters are locked on May 6th, which I believe is the following week. So... Remains to be seen whether they're locked or they're WWE locked, yeah. which means we'll see. they just go wherever they want. So we're going to do the draft. Uh, we're going to do SmackDown first. Oh, we said we're going to flip a coin to see who is who. So I'm going to do... Oh, I thought, I thought we had uh, oh, oh. already decided that because it's a British guy. You're right. You're, you're Nicholas. Nicholas. So, so you get the first... <laughs> Although I don't really do a Nicholas impersonation, so we could flip a coin. That's okay. <laughs> uh, so Sully gets the first pick. Are we doing SmackDown first? We're going to do SmackDown first. Okay. Uh, if really quickly, if you would like to watch along, I don't know, just Google, <laughs> Google, <laughs> Google who's in the I'll, I'll read them off. I'll read them off. So the eligible. Oh, I, I uh, have them if you if you want them. You got them. I got them right here. Gotcha. Yeah, the eligible uh, draft picks from the SmackDown roster, which we'll be doing first. AJ Styles, uh, All the Fire, and Isla Dawn, Alpha Academy, because it's, again, it's it's entire factions. Andrade, uh, Bianca Belair, Braun Breaker, Cedric the Entertainer, and. Uh, uh, grown ass man. Grown ass man. Who is his partner? Ashan- Ashanti. The Adonis. Adonis. The Adonis. The Adonis. Okay. Yeah. I don't. Not familiar. I don't think. NXT. Uh, Ivar. J Uso. L A. Uh, Liv Morgan. Nia Jax. No, thank you. <laughs> can she be relegated? Uh, can we do that on a draft? Uh, Randy Orton. Put on a waiver. Ricochet. <laughs> Seth Rollins. Future Endeavor. Um, Shayna Baszler. Sheamus. Fat Sheamus, uh, the Bloodline, uh, the OC, and Zoe Stark. Yep. And then shall I do the Raw rundown now? Or might as well. So yeah, available for Raw, Apollo Creed, Apollo Creed, <laughs> Apollo <laughs> Cruz, uh, Braun Strowman. Where's, where's Braun Strowman been? Bronson, not Otis Reed. Uh, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell, who for some reason are on my television every week. Uh, Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. CM Punk. Oh, uh, Dave's got the first pick on Raw. Uh, the Creed Brothers. Damage Guitaro. Uh, Drew McIntyre. Final Testament. Giovanni Vinci. Imperium, which uh, I guess, yeah, now is just the two. Uh, Jade Cargill, but oh, they're separated, huh? Yep. Bianca and Jade. Yep. I think it's just going to draft them together, I guess, really. Uh, I can judge me, D. Caden uh, <laughs> <laughs> Caden Carter and Katana Chance, whose names I forget immediately after I say them every time because they are... Katana Carter? 
no, K- I, Caden, Caden Chance. Caden, Car- yeah. Caden Chance. Maybe called her Caden Chance. Ka- I said Cross, Caden which Cross. is neither one of them. So whatever happened to Nikki Cross? Remember her? Oh yeah, she was great too. Yeah. What did happen to her? Fuck if I know. I think she was going back to school or something. She just got her doctorate. I thought. Oh, she's, like she's, I think she achieved it while wrestling. Maybe she'll be in the draft. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Uh, but not no, because yeah. we're reading who's available. We are reading right now. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that's not in the list I sent you is it says and some NXT superstar. Oh, okay. So it's very because uns- like Dragonoff's coming. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, what's her face? Uh, the, the the. Well, I want to draft Dragonoff. You can't. He's not on the list. <laughs> Kevin Owens is though. Kevin Owens is. Right uh, Legato del Fantasma, the LWO, and Naomi. All right, you have the first pick. So from. The SmackDown. We're doing the, the enti- We're doing the entire SmackDown first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm taking the bloodline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and even my favorite, just, uh, yeah. it's, you can't, you can't have the bloodline there and not take them. Right. Like, it's the bloodline. I, uh, unfortunately, have to take Seth Rollins. Ooh, really? Yeah. So I, I take it you're drafting from the perspective of the company. I'm booking a more company. Than, more than yourself. I'm booking. Well, a company, you, you're booking their company. Because I think even if you read a company, Seth Rollins would not be your. I hate him, but top dude. He uh, he's there. Yeah. Uh, Bianca Belair. All right, ladies and gentlemen, come on. Course. I am taking Braun Breaker. Uh, that was my. It would have been my third. Because <laughs> he is the future. Yeah. Uh, I am gonna go with the newly very over. Uh, as a heel faction, Alpha Academy. Damn. <laughs> uh, I am taking Liv Morgan. Ooh, good one. Yeah. We're pretty She's much on, like... On fire right we're now. We're right in alignment with each other. Uh, it gets a little more dicey right now, though. Oh, oh okay. there still is a, AJ. There is a steep drop-off in both of these lists. Uh, AJ Styles. Damn it. <laughs> but yeah, now there's a drop-off. <laughs> Coming, coming over to... You gotta uh, be Usy, right? Oh, yeah, it's... You gotta uh, be Usy. That's right. The Eat Master. <laughs> <laughs> I pick Jay Uso. He's too over to not... Yeah. And speaking of too over to not eat, despite kind of sucking, I'll take LA Knight. Ooh. <laughs> now we're just having some division here. <laughs> I'm well, taking... That's just... It's not even my own personal. It's She's no. just super over. I'm taking Randy Orton. I have a horse. If you have a tag partner for him, I would have been happy to take him, but <laughs> I'm not interested in Randy... <laughs> Randall Keith by himself. Thank you. I think now I can get into just my own personal, like yeah. who I would book in what way. We are uh, 10 picks down, 10 to go. So it's going to get a little dicey. I am going to take... Or five picks down each. But do I want... Uh, I'm going to take Shayna. I'm a big fan of Shayna, ba- Shayna Baszler. Shayna. All right. Wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a, people will consider it a reach, but it's only because they've booked her terribly. And yeah. when they book her right, she's fantastic. I'm taking Ricochet. I like Ricochet a lot. I will be going with Andrade. Andrade? Del Idolo. This is going to make you laugh. Even though he's not Idolo now. I'm not like most girls. I'm taking Nia Jax. <laughs> for, for what? She's going to be like set up your ring for you or something? Fodder. She can't do that either. Fodder. <laughs> they got NXT people to be fodder. <laughs> she's too dangerous a worker to be a like, gotta, enhancement talent. You don't got to worry about her because she's on my program now. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> uh... I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope that you're right about uh, this gentleman, and that it's a shameful thing that Lobster had. <laughs> it just came back a little too early, and I'm gonna take Seamus. Oh, I'm going out of order here. I think. Uh, I'm gonna go with. No, I'm not. Oh shit. Um, only because he has NXT to his name. I'm gonna go with Cedric Alexander and Ashante the Adonis. Okay. They, they're much like, uh, at least what I said, I don't know the other guy too much, but uh, much like Shayna, I think, if booked correctly, like, or it's properly. They, they got a new guy. Like, they sh- could not have shit the bed harder with Cedric Alexander. Yeah. But I, I got high hopes for. He's really great, though. He's Cedric. great. Like, um, Unreasonably good. Do I want Ivar? Yeah. Uh, four picks left. Dark. The OC is just the two of them, right? Mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Those guys don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll make 
make I'm gonna make my show a, a pretty strong women's division. I'll go with Zoe Stark. They sold me with her with their uh, unnecessary hype video. I like Ivar, but I like him on a tag yeah. team. Um, I would also like multiple picks, so I will have the OC because I need gatekeepers on my show. Well, I'm gonna take Ivar now because I don't want uh, Elba Fire and Isla Dawn. <laughs> All right, so. Let's look at our roster so far. Let's. So, on Sully's show, we have the Bloodline, Bianca Belair. <laughs> I win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The Bloodline, Bianca Belair, Alpha Academy, AJ Styles, LA Knight, Shayna Baszler, Andrade, Sheamus, Zoe Stark, and Ivar. A, you have a let's beat the shit out of each other every week roster. Yeah, wow. That's a fun show. That's I'm not looking. bad. That's not bad. <laughs> I have Seth Rollins, Braun Breaker, Liv Morgan, Jay Uso, Randy Orton, Ricochet, Nia Jax, Cedric Alexander, and Ashante the Adonis, the OC, and Alba Fire, and Isla Dawn. Do you notice something here? Uh, Sunday Night Heat? <laughs> I am booking. I have picked a WWE roster, and you have picked an AEW roster. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Why well, do you have the bloodline? I mean, like well, you can't. <laughs> it's like not taking uh, uh, Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I do. I also have LA Knight. You do. Yeah. You begrudging, so, but, but you like back to back. You have AJ Styles. And yeah. LA Knight. Yeah. 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 Um, this is fun. Yes, it is. Um, all right. So yeah. I have the first to, pick on Raw. You go first on Raw. I mean, this is a Come goddamn no-brainer. Right? Look in my eyes. What do you see? <laughs> he is the pick that goes to me. CM Punk and is my first pick. Be a big surprise. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Kevin Owens. Oh, <laughs> he's my favorite wrestler in the company. <laughs> I'm not going to not pick him. Not bad. <laughs> I'm really glad you did that. So my uh, second pick, Imperium. Uh, good, good call. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm I'm whatever on half of Imperium, but the other half. I got is Gunther. That's the all best I care wrestler about. in the company. So, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Candice LeRae and I'm kidding. No. Ah! <laughs> um, they're, too, they're way down there. Guys. Or I just I do want to just draft like it's AEW. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at like uh, uh, like it's an NFL draft, which is just what you would do for Drew. Drew, yes. So Drew McIntyre he goes can to do Sully, anything. Sully so. Night Heat. Um, Owens and Drew, come on! <laughs> it's my I'm, first program. I'm taking. <laughs> I'm taking all of Damage Control. But it's Damage Control without Bailey. <laughs> it's the best tag team in the company, and yeah, I, yeah, that's I true. Have, actually, all four of them are fucking awesome. Yeah, that's true. I do like them all. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good call. Um, as much as I want to go in a different direction here, I can't deny the popularity of the fucking Judgment Day. <laughs> <laughs> I have them so far down. Really? Oh, yeah. They're like most overheal probably in the whole company. I don't like. <sighs> yeah, but they're... the. Best this? woman? Oh, fuck. I forgot about her. Because <laughs> she's, she's injured. <laughs> That's like when the, the Vikings forgot to put their pick in and yeah. the other team got to jump them. <laughs> uh, damn it. Uh, truth, Dave? Yeah. I just thought of that right now, too. <laughs> like, I didn't remember either that she's part of the Judgment yeah. Day. I got her. That would have <laughs> been way I got Rhea Ripley. That should have been the number one overall pick on this, this half. <laughs> um, I win. <laughs> well, since I'm booking a WWE company, I might as well. No, Should, no, that that'll be there. Um, I just because I want Rey Mysterio, I'm going to go the LWO. Free Brothers. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm winning the GM challenge here, Dave. Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> to a degree. I mean, like by accident, I got Rhea Ripley by accident. Yeah, by accident. <laughs> oh. So then I'm going to take. Well, do I have a good tag division right now? No. I got a lot of singles. I got a really strong singles. Uh, I guess we're going to do. I don't want this fucker. No. Oh, you see the drop off? Yeah. Um, 
I have a lot of ladies, though, so I'm going to go Chelsea Green and Piper Chelsea. Niven. Chelsea. That's probably my pick. Do I? I don't want not Otis. <laughs> <laughs> I do really like the Authors of Pain, though. Yeah, I'm going to go Final Testament. God I like Authors it. of Pain. <laughs> and uh, Carrying Cross is, like we talked about, he's got everything but the ring. And you don't really need the ring. So Really quickly, I just <laughs> noticed, and I made this, so I, sh- I texted this to you. I should notice. Giovanni Vinci's by, Vinci is by himself. By himself, yeah. So I just selected... The two guys. I said it. I'm, I'm like, oh, that. you get the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you really were selecting yeah, one. Gunther. It was just <laughs> like, Gunther by a different name. Um, let's do. Hmm. I'm bummed out that that Kevin Owens and CM Punk are going to be on different shows now. Well, you got greedy. I can't remember my first pick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what Judgment Day would have been my first pick had my brain been working <laughs> properly, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't even consider that. All right, I got a lot of ladies. I don't have a good tag division. Um, I'm going to. I do have. I have gatekeeper tag teams. I have some tag teams. Do I have? Oh, I, have the I think you want some Caden Carter and Katana Chance. Right? <laughs> you want some of that in your life? They go to. They, they go, go out in the club. They party. I know that they do no. because they tell me that every week on TV when I have do to we watch them. Anybody coming up? <laughs> Ah, uh, they're done. They're dead in the water. They're dead in the water. They're dead. In the, the fuck it. Jade, 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 Jade Cargill. Nah. <laughs> uh, I was gonna do. I that. had her way higher, but I'm like, I don't think Slowly's gonna take her ever. <laughs> uh, I'm booking this. AEW, so I'm like, well, here you go. Uh, I mean, you're if you're booking AEW, you got hmm. obvious choices here. Yeah, I'm not really booking AEW, but mm-hmm. I am gonna take. Uh, I kind of like Candice LeRae. I would break. I'm going to break that tag team up. I think you think so. I think I want Candice LeRae and, and Indy Hartwell. Yeah, it was cheap. I mean, sure. It's like when <laughs> you know she's going to be uh, designated for assignment immediately. Yeah. But it's for Candice LeRae. Yeah. Sometimes when you go uh, when you go out to eat, they give you multiple dipping sauces, <laughs> and you're like, I just want the honey mustard. Exactly. Uh, I'm thinking specifically <laughs> yeah. of chicken wings. Like, why did you bring barbecue? It was wasted. It's so a waste of barbecue. Indy, <laughs> Indy Hartwell is the barbecue. <laughs> Um, I thought for sure you were going a different route with that. So I have ladies. I need more ladies. I would like ladies. To, are there any more ladies available? I don't want you. You're so slow. There are Caden Carter and Katana Chance are right there for you, Dave. <laughs> right there. They're not even at the bottom of my list. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? No. Naomi? Because you hate Naomi. Hey, I, uh, uh, I need tags. DIY. Do I, I don't have DIY on my list. They're on your list. Are they not? The one I texted you? Nope. Oh. I just copied and pasted it. Let me double check. I can remove them. No, no. I wouldn't. I, I think I would have taken. Yeah, well, the, I probably would have taken them with the last pick. but They're right there. How raw, the hell did I do this? Raw then? DIY. Oh, I. Because they're hashtag. <laughs> they're hashtag <laughs> DIY. So I'm like, they're not. I just see the D. Yeah. All right. I wish you see the D. <laughs> I see the D anytime I want to see the D, yeah, Dave. That's right. Uh, do Dave? Oh, man. So just if you're uh, keeping up, what we have left is Bronson Reed, Legato <laughs> Del Fantasma, Giovanni Vinci, Naomi, Caden Carter, and Katana Chance, Apollo Crews, and Braun Strowman. Yeah, that sure is who's left. <laughs> Legato? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a consolation prize at this point. <laughs> Did you take Ivar? I think you did. I did. Uh, just. Uh, I'm very happy with my SmackDown side. <laughs> I'll take Naomi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably right. Uh, Apollo, because I'll book him better than these assholes yeah, have. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I'm going to take Braun Strowman. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. Vinci. <laughs> so it is a Sophie's choice here. Uh, do you want, the two the, the two separate acts that uh, we both have gone ugh do we want, on like while are doing reviews the last two weeks. Bronson Reed or Caden Carter and Katana Chance. 
I tell you what, I've, I've been leaning for the ladies here. I'm going to take the ladies. Because <laughs> mostly because I want him on your show. <laughs> <laughs> he is going to, I'm going to book him as. <laughs> Cannon fodder. Drew McIntyre's <laughs> new chauffeur. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. All right. So uh, we are going to list. Can, do you post stuff like this on the site? I haven't yet, but I'm going to start yeah. this week with my star rating. Yeah. So I can put this up too. Yeah. So just as a quick rundown, we're going to go. Actually, we're going to put this in a simulator and we're I mean, going to have it. They rank. rank. I have Bloodline and the Judgment Day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, rank these two. From best to worst. Let's see how. Let's see how AI, AI does this. <laughs> oh, wait. No. Do not combine the lists. Like my first week, I'm going to open the show with Rhea Ripley. <laughs> Coming no. out to challenge. What is it doing here? No, no, no. Then we'll do a Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens bit. Mm. A little back and forth action. Oh, you're booking like a Backstage, back and forth. <laughs> um, oh, I see what it did. Um, We don't have to do that because I don't want to waste more time with this. So... Uh, on, I'm going to go first just because I think you did. Well, we'll see. So on my show, we have Seth Rollins, Braun Breaker, Liv Morgan, Love Braun. Love Jay Liv. Uso, Randy Orton, Ricochet, Nia Jax, Cedric Alexander and Ashante the Adonis, the OC, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. They can feud with Kate and Carter and Katana Chance all day. Uh, sure can. They can also feud with <laughs> CM Punk, <laughs> Gunther, I'm not even counting the other guy. Who's talking to CM Punk? Who's he? Who's he having a back and forth with? Who do I got? Oh, that's okay. I have <laughs> Seth Rollins. Son of a bitch. I got nobody. Jay Uso, Randy Orton. No, the O. No. And your Gunther. Your, your, Gunther. He's Gunther? talking to Gunther. Okay. Okay. They're gonna eat each other. Uh, Rey Mysterio. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> <Tommaso Ciampa? laughs> oh wow yeah you you, you could... think they're flipping over to kevin owens and drew mcintyre <laughs> chopping it up <laughs> or kevin owens and I'm rhea ripley like tearing down the Jesus. bloodline got, how about that i got fucking, <laughs> i got you i got uh, i like the confidence you have now that you realize you accidentally got rhea ripley <laughs> Anyway, CM Punk, don't, Gunther, Damage Control. Don't tell the, me how you got there. Tell me what you got. Yeah, the LWO, <laughs> Chelsea Green and Piper Niven, Jade Cargill, DIY Naomi, Braun Strowman, and Caden Carter and Katana Chance. <sighs> I have. That's all he has. The uh, Bloodline. The Bloodline. <laughs> the Judgment Day <laughs> featuring Rhea Ripley. <laughs> Kevin Owens. <laughs> Shayna Baszler, Sheamus, is always dark. Uh, L.A. Knight. Ivar, Bianca Belair. Andrade del Hilo, who I will be uh, partnering with Ivar, I think, in a tag team because they, they both need tag partners. Uh, Alpha Academy with newly, like, freshly minted, incredible heel, yeah. Chad Gable. Uh, uh, another reason why I kind of have to keep, um, what's his face, Bronson Reed off of the regular television program because I got Otis. Uh, AJ Styles. Oh, you could have a dark versus light feud. <laughs> Apollo <laughs> Crews. Uh, my, the two differently skinned uh, same guys. Yeah. Cry. Creed Brothers are pretty. That's a pretty good yeah, team. I, I was a pretty good team. Pretty good. Right you got that one. <laughs> um, uh, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. They're getting broken up. Indy's going to be a manager, I think. Uh, Final Testaments. Uh, maybe the Creed Brothers and Authors of Pain. I'll start with that feud. Motherfucker. Right off the bat. <laughs> um... Uh, Giovanni Vinci. I'll do something with him. I don't know quite what yet. Uh, and Legato del Fantasma. I'm, ha I'm happy. With I'm, the way this turned out, Dave. I have more work to do than you do. <laughs> you got to just got to book well. Everybody on your roster is very talented. I got, a, I got an easy start, though. I got a lot of super people are super over. You're <laughs> already built in successes. So the bloodline's about like six guys. Alpha Academy's four. I have Roman Reigns, Dave. Yeah. 
Like if Roman Reigns is Paul Heyman. Like maybe I'll, maybe I'll have Paul Heyman and Kevin Owens God. chop it up to start a, a program. <laughs> this did not. I thought as we're picking, this is going completely in my favor. <laughs> Sounds like me every fantasy football draft. This is going great. How the hell did I end up with this? I got fucking. I think I got decimated. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm usually I'm, I try to be positive about everybody, oh, but God. I, I do feel like it, I won. I won this pretty this one goddamn game. lopsided for <laughs> sure. I mean, really, the us forgetting that the Judgment Day had, had the most over maybe performer in the whole company yeah. in it um, worked damn. out in my favor. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, it's great. You got Bronson Reed. You lose. <sighs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, enjoy the uh, the actual WWE draft. And uh, please uh, check back again next week if you haven't if you haven't already. Uh, go check out the AEW. It was a, a pretty interesting dynamite. It was a pretty solid show. You guys check it out. Drop in the same time as this one. Uh, as always, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next week. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye.